Yo, welcome to Small Mouth Crush. I was actually going to let Alex start out with the intro tonight, but I decided to switch it up a little bit. We're going to bring him on shortly. Epic Eric is nowhere to be found. He's somewhere between here and Alabama. Who knows? Guy never lets us down until the, the best night, the night that everything, the magic happens. I got to bring Alex on because when I first saw him tonight, I really couldn't tell if you were part of the backdrop or what. <laughs> yeah, so it had to been at least two years ago now. I was at Goodwill scrounging around for Halloween costume. And I just saw this shirt, and it was like $2. <laughs> I thought, how can you not buy this shirt for $2? So I wear it around the house. If I'm feeling spicy for a night out, I'll wear it out on the town. always get some good comments, some good looks, so. I do like how it does blend in with the background, kind of just like a floating head now. So that I bring it around cool. from time to time when I'm feeling a little a little good that day, and that's definitely a day like today. So excited to have Scott on and hopefully Eric here in a little bit, and it's going to be a good one tonight. Wow. So is that long sleeve, or are you wearing a shirt under yes. it? No, it's long sleeve. It's really – there you go. Is so, that extra large? Would you sell that? It's pretty big, yeah. It, I mean, if I let it go, it'll, the Who sleeve makes will go that? down past my wrist. Do you got like know. a – I'm sure you could just Google like bear print shirt or so. I don't know. A bear print? Not like I, that. That's a rare find. That's why I bought it. And it was only $2. So, I mean, the resale value might go up after this show. You might see a little Small Mouth Crush auction next week. Maybe the, we should auction the that. The VIP off. live. Yeah. Autograph Ooh. it. And throw in a Dang. Small Mouth Crush buff or something since we got a bunch of those sitting around. Still. We got to do something. What we are going to do is we're definitely going to do a little giveaway, guys, tonight. Uh, we're going to bring back the Super Chat deal. I have a big old Monster Bass bag full of goodies in here. This is the special one, okay? Not only do we have some Nico products, which we're going to be talking about tonight. Where else can you get the Lunker Hunt Prop Turtle? Right here, Alex. Don't laugh. I saw that smirk. That's going in the bag. We got some Small Mouth Crush stickers in here. We got some terminal tackle. This is a loaded up bag. Super chats. You know the rules. You donate a dollar, you get entered in. We're going to raffle this off at the end of the night. Awesome. One of the best parts about that is the bag that it comes in. I mean, you can use those for oh, a variety of storage needs. Heck yeah, dude. God, there's Shout some good stuff in here. I see Alex Rudd square bill in red. Oh, man. A lot going on. A lot going on. I don't even know where to begin. It's raining out again. The waters are muddy. It's dirty. It's nasty. Mm. I don't know what's up with the weather this year, man. I mean, last year it seemed like at this time, at least in my area, the water temperatures were, you know, high 50s, and now we're low 50s, muddy water. It snowed today. I don't, we're going to have to put in a complaint with the people that control the weather or something, Travis. It's getting a little ridiculous this year. It is. I don't know what they're doing to us, but it is getting ridiculous. Um, Mr. Andrews in the comments, Travis's YouTube must be on the no fly list because I haven't gotten notifications. Yes. I probably made mention of some, some uh, words uh, when you combine them together. Uh, the YouTube algorithm did not like that. So we might be shadow banned again, but we're going to fight through this. I've been trying to keep it clean. I've been trying to 
contain myself. I haven't used too many buzzwords that would tip off the deep state, but apparently they're back at their game. So uh, we might be a little, uh, we might be on the radar here. We'll see what happens. Hopefully we can uh, work through this. I do appreciate everybody joining us. We got, we got a few people joining. Let's do some likes and shares and get this thing going. I know that always helps guys. Uh, anytime you can promote this on your socials and just share the link. And of course a thumbs up. M Jones comes in strong with the first super chat of the night at $10. He's dealing awesome. with the same thing down in Alabama, muddy water fishing rain every three days. I and hear you of muddy water fishing. Travis, I asked you this question Saturday morning. Cause I was facing some, some muddy water conditions. I asked Travis, what is your favorite finesse bait for muddy water? And you want to share with everyone what you told me? Well, I, I shared with you, just because you, you it was a very specific question when was, I woke yes. up at 7 a.m. and <laughs> saw your text. And I'm like, all right, I'm not just going to give him a quick answer. I'm going to really think about this. Thanks, Tom, for the uh, super chat. Um, So a compact jig, and I really like the Beast Coast Little Magnum. It's a nice little flipping jig. They have one kind of... Uh, Almost a straight black. There might be some red flake in there. And then I put a, uh, I told you to put a little rage chunk on the back. And that's just a nice little compact jig. Finesse for dirty water. Now, a lot of times I wouldn't go finesse. So I'm curious what your takeaway or why you, why you wanted to go finesse in that muddy water, as opposed to perhaps, you know, power fish, a, a, a big spinner bait or, you know, that new big bladed chatter, chatter bait that yeah. they have, or, you know, something like that. What would, what, what made you gravitate towards that? So I was fishing like a, a big stump flat and I knew I was going to go through there with, like you said, the spinner bait, the square bill, the chatter bait, you know, all that noisy stuff. But I knew it was a really small lake. So after I did that a couple of times, got some bites cycling back through i wanted something a little different to show the fish and i thought you know if i just throw a wacky rig out there that's not gonna have the biggest drawing power and i'd have to fish that flat very very thoroughly so i wanted your take on a finesse bait that you liked in muddy water and like you said you know you gave me one of the jig it's gonna have a little more drawing power it's gonna you know we can put some max scent we can put some nico baits and stuff on there that are gonna have a good draw and a good mm -hmm. scent to get those fish you know at least a little extra way to find that bait rather than just the lateral line in that muddy water. So try to appeal to them more than just through the lateral line because obviously visually it's hard to do in that muddy water. So I wanted something I could go comb through them there and still be efficient, but thorough at the same time. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. That, I mean, that made sense. How did, how did that advice, uh, it helped. I got the, the fishing conditions were just horrible for the lake I was on. So I caught some short fish on it, but that was pretty much the summary of my day. It was not a good day for me on the water, but those are the only things I got a bite on was that finesse cheeky gave me that tip on. So I'm very appreciative Great. of that. And I'll follow that one back in the memory banks for conditions. You see this, you see this hoodie on me a lot. This one in that white one, the same pattern that I use the smallmouth crush hoodies in because I just love these hoodies, dude. They're like uh super comfortable. And uh, if you are interested in any of the PowerPole products, of course, PowerPole.com. They got the PowerPole Charge. They got, of course, the shallow water anchors. And hopefully, someday, they'll have a trolling motor. You just never know. Eventually. I know I've seen some people like to do a lot of investigative research out on that trolling motor. I saw a video one time where PowerPole, you know, I don't know if it was a classic or something, but they were at a convention and they had a big graphic up of a guy on a boat with power poles. And the trolling motor on that specific boat was not like any out on the market at that time. And people were speculating that the trolling motor on that boat was the, the new power pool one that they're coming out with. And it, it looked pretty slick. I know people have been waiting for that for a long time. It's definitely, I mean, what's that rumor been going on about two years now? So, you know, they're putting their blood, sweat and tears into it and should be a great product when it hits the market. <sighs> Gosh, I can't wait. I can't wait. Not that I had any problems yet with the Lawrence, except for a little arrow issue, which I did put up a video yeah. recently. So uh, what's well, one of the things I want to really do with the channel is start talking more about uh, just some small things that may not relate to the whole masses. But what we call that in the YouTube 
world is is evergreen videos meaning if somebody's out there searching for how to fix my arrow on the trolling motor uh hopefully they'll they'll come to my video and maybe stick around a little longer and watch some of the other content and this is just a way for me to kind of expand of course we love the regulars here on the show and i know we got a lot of you guys watching um a lot of a lot of familiar names here in the comments and so Again, I want to thank everybody for joining us. We're going to have a great show tonight with or without Eric. I know he's he had plans on coming on. Um, he was heading down to uh, visit Ryan Salzman. Ooh, and nice. so it'll be interesting to see. I don't know if they got out to fish today or if he was uh, still heading down there. But I talked to him mm-hmm. yesterday. And he said he was going to try to try to make it. But I mean, yeah, going back to the Evergreen video you're talking about real quick, I think one of the most viewed videos you have on your channel is changing the lower unit oil on a yes, right. stroke pro. I've watched that video several times. I mean, I keep going back to it, and it's great to have short, quick videos like that to help you out because that's, you know, that's my, one of my first resources I'll go to is you just straight to the Google when I don't know how to fix something on the boat. So oh, sure. Great to yeah. get more of those videos out there, especially for a new product like the Ghost where you're not going to find too much. Mm-hmm. outside of you know the Lawrence videos for that yeah, yeah i'm sure it's crazy yeah guys are asking what the super chat is uh monster bass bag we got some eco products it's actually a pretty jam-packed bag a little extras than what they normally throw in um decided to put that in there heck yeah all right darius got the hoodie yeah hopefully you guys uh from last week's show got all should have all the merchandise by now i know the mail's been a little backlogged but uh man we sent out a bunch of uh Hoodies, T-shirts, hats. We still got a bunch left. You still can go on the website and uh, no shipping on any of the Smallmouth Crush merchandise. Um, maybe in the future we'll do another big giveaway for anyone that does buy something uh, off of that. But that was a – I would consider that a success. We, we were able to get a lot of product out there. Mark, thanks for the uh, the super chat. One month Thank to you, Lake St. Clair. Any secret baits to share? Mark, you're going to want to stick around tonight because we are going to have some sneaky baits. I know I kind of last time we had uh, Nico on uh, it was about it was probably about a year ago now back last spring, yeah. and it was one of the most eye opening from a product standpoint. I don't know if you agree with this, Alex, but I was taking notes. I learned a lot more about the product lineup. I know he's got some new things to talk about. We still want to go back over some of the old products because really this this past year was the year that I used a, a wide variety of, of all their products. And I want to share my experiences, uh, you know, fishing Nico baits. And we have a couple videos that we're going to share in the background. I know Eric and myself have done really well with their products. So uh, I'm excited tonight. I'm ready to uh, refresh my memory because there's a lot of things, so much information that we forget a lot, even though, yeah. uh, you know, sometimes we take notes, sometimes we don't. So you're definitely going to want to, uh, listen up and pay attention tonight for sure. We're going to go over some great, great little sneaky baits. And I have, what do I have? I had something else. Oh, of course. We got the Smallmouth Crush Open coming up in Jan- uh, January, July 24th, up on the St. Lawrence River. You guys know all about it. But now we have made it a little bit simpler. We actually have a link on my website, smallmouthcrush.com. If you're interested in signing up, you can head on over there. Get your entry in. Send it over to JP. Now, we had a couple complaints. And I want to address that right now. Some individuals were a little upset that that I'm fishing my own tournament. Now, I want to make a couple things clear. The reason why we decided to put this tournament on is because I wanted to fish more events, right? There wasn't enough tournaments in that section of the lake, team events and things like that. I just wanted to put something out there. I'm not putting it on. We're actually having a bass club uh, put the tournament on. I am promoting it. We are calling it the Smallmouth Crush Open, but I'm I'm fishing. Like I, I don't have a say in you know the rules and things like that. Like we we made the rules. The bass club is going to do all the scales, so there's not going to be any funny business. I ain't got my thumb on the scale. I don't know what you guys are worried about. I struggle out there just like everybody else. And so for those that are a little concerned, I mean, I don't know. I'm going to try to win it. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for sure. <laughs> so, And I mean, if I was one of those guys, I'd just be excited to have the opportunity to go beat you in your own tournament. 
exactly. Beat exactly. Tra- you know, beat this guy out that guides every day. It's up there all the time. We'll show them what they know on that lake. So yeah, I think it'll be I, a good opportunity for some good competition and definitely a good large size event I, for that body of water that it may not see. Too I, much I can think of five up. I, I can think of 10 other guys that are bigger threats that are going to be fishing this tournament than me. So uh, you think I'm like, like I know the names that are coming. I know the guys that fish out there on a regular basis. Uh, they're going to be there. So uh it's it's it is going to be what it is so we'll have to see what happens uh next week also i do want to uh share this with you we have the small health crush vip members only that's gonna be next week monday at 7 p.m so you guys can go to my website smallmouthcrush.com to sign up for that it's ten dollars per month or you can buy a whole year membership a lot of great information you can also buy past episodes and this this next week, I'm going to be sharing pretty much everything I do when it comes to uh, fishing around the spawn. All the techniques. I'm not going to hold anything back. I'm going to be able to answer everybody's question when it comes to that. I feel like it's one of my top strengths as an angler. It's something uh, – it's controversial, right? I know bed fishing goes out all over the country, but when for some reason when you talk Great Lakes smallmouth, everybody gets all opinionated about it, you know? Lake Fork or Lake Okeechobee, there's tournaments every weekend. They're, uh, you know, during the spawn, like all week long, probably. And so it is what it is. Sometimes you have to compete under those conditions. And I'm going to share with you uh, how I go about that. I'm actually gearing up to fish a tournament in Wisconsin uh, the third week in May, I believe. Second or third week in May, it's the Wisco uh, team event. And JP and I are going to be fishing that together. And judging by the 10-day window, uh, out to April 2nd, we don't have a day that's above 50 degrees uh, and and nights in the 40s, sometimes 30s. And so we'll, we're going to have about two weeks in between that last forecasted date and then the fact that uh, I don't know what's going to happen. Like, I was expecting a full-blown spawn tournament which that time of year I, I love doing. But it's going to, uh, gosh, it's going to be an interesting little deal. If it's pre-spawn still, that's just going to put a lot of boats in certain areas, and it's mm. going to be anyone's game. So we're going to have to see what what happens here. Yeah, I'm really excited for going back to it a little bit that, you know, the membership live for next week. I remember – is last year after you fished that Wisco event, you shared with Eric and I a, a bed fishing tip that really helped you put one in the boat quickly that you've been working on for, you know, half an hour to an hour at that point. And I remember, I mean, you, you told us like three times before you said, he said, I'm not, this is serious. You're not going to believe me, but. Oh, this shit. Is, this is. Is that the, the crazy thing I said? Mm-hmm. He I warned us like that. three times. I'm telling the truth. I know you won't believe me, but this I is the truth. That. So shit. You do. So I'm excited that. for next week's show and to get some more of those tips because I know you still got some up that sleeve that you're ready. Remind to me people. too, if I don't bring that up because I, I tend to not bring that up. And I do want to share that with the people that are part of that show for sure. You know what? We'll, I mean, I'm sure we'll talk about it next week too, but I would think that there's some bed fishing tips and tricks that also work throughout the remainder of the year, you know, like, Oh, sure. You see the guys hitting their rod when they work in a bed fish. Well, if you're under a dock or something, what, is that really going to hurt anything? If you start tapping your rod, things like that. So there'll be plenty of things like that to think about next week and plenty of tips that will knock your socks right off your feet. So it'll be a good one next week. Make sure you guys go over there and sign up. Absolutely. So Eric just texts me and he says, Oh, uh, He's still on the water. Imagine that. Wow. I can't blame him, right? Yeah. Sometimes that bite is just too good. Let him let him have his fun, you know. For sure. I used my PTO a couple weeks ago. I guess Eric put his in. Maybe the request was a little late, but I think we can still accept that request. I'm sure I'll make it on before the night's over. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> All right. Let's bring on the guest of the evening. Scott, what's going on? Hey, not too much. I'm glad to be on again. Heck yeah, man. We're glad to have you. Let me try to adjust my camera here. Got that power pull banner. Someone was supposed to fix it for me, but I guess they got busy <laughs> buying uh, bear t-shirts at Goodwill. Uh, listen, Scott, <laughs> we're glad to have you back. Last time I saw you was at the Harrisburg show. You stopped in, talked to me for a little bit. We shared some of your baits actually up on the, on the tank. 
Yep. And um, man, a lot and, of. And one of them's still at the place, right? Yeah, I got, I got snagged a few times <laughs> up on the tables. I got to get better at casting, man, up there. It's a, there's a tadpole up on the ceiling somewhere, right? But you've been crazy busy, man. So you've been doing a lot of these shows uh, throughout the year. I know things are sort of, is it safe to say the show season's winded down for you now? Yes, all finished with the shows. Good, good. Yeah, they're exhausting. They are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How many did you do this year? We only did uh, three or four. Okay. Um, the last one I did was in South Carolina. And, um, you know, that was a little bit rough because uh, not a lot of people in South Carolina have heard of Nico, surprisingly enough. And uh, Really? Yeah, so... You know, you just go a couple hours to say uh, East Tennessee, and boy, it was it was practically people were lining up to get into the booth. Hmm. And, uh, it's just like uh, just a couple hours away. It, it was a big difference. Right, right. Wow. So we have a lot to cover tonight. I know when you were on our show last year, uh, it was there was people that were like emailing me to take the show down. Don't <laughs> let it. You know, don't let people watch it again. Um, I was kind of, I was actually second guessing myself at that time too, because I, it, I was blown away. And so I'm really excited tonight. I want to pretend though, Scott, like, like this never happened before. I want to go through your whole lineup. I want to hear some fresh stories about the baits. Um, if you can, if you could just give us a quick little background, some history about yourself and, and what you've been up to in the last year when it comes to, uh, to Nico. All right. Well, um, you know, my name's Scott. I've been, uh, I live in Virginia. Uh, my family's been in Virginia for like 260 years. Um, I grew up fishing the Shenandoah River for smallmouth and, you know, hunting and trapping and all, all kinds of things outdoors. Um, uh, after I, I went to grad school and looked, look, was looking for adventure and ended up in Japan. And uh, it's been a long time in Japan. And Japan's a really cool place to be. Um, and I ended up meeting Nico at a nanotechnology exposition and they were showing off some of the nanotechnology that only Nico was using, uh, that they, they put into their baits. And, you know, for the, from the older, older viewers, they re, they may remember when they were kids, uh, I think it was the owner of the new England Patriots, uh, Mr. Gillette, you know, when he saw the razor, he liked it so much. He bought the company. Um, it was kind of like that. I saw Nico and immediately fell in love with the product, the material, what they were doing, what they stood for. And I just had to be involved. And uh, so, uh, you know, so I was helping him in Japan and I was in the uh, the 2011 earthquake and the tsunami and all that fun radiation and all that disaster that happened then. And uh, wow. I decided to come to the U.S. and, and uh, work on Nico here and um Never worked in the fishing industry at all. Never worked in a consumer industry. I was always industrial, more of like a materials engineering type uh, work. And uh, just started one customer at a time with, you know, very little budget and very little to work with. And uh, we've come a long way. Um, so, you know, last year, uh, well, I spent many years without a bait that was designed for the U.S. market until the Helgramite came along. Sure. And um even though I could use the shrimp and the octopus and the tadpoles and I could catch, I was catching more fish than ever before than, than anything I'd ever used before. Um, it was still a tough sell for a lot of customers. And then once the Helgramite came around, people started to find us and know, and know what we know, what we can do. And in the last year, you know, we've had, um, we've released a rib swim bait, um, or leeches, um, uh, Ned's, and another another little bait I forgot to bring out, a um, little European, uh, little tiny swim bait for creeks. Um, and, you know, we've just really, really grown and taken off. Um, the craws have really, I know we're, I know you fish the craws and uh, I like them and they, they've really taken off. I mean, some really, some really serious fishermen are really seriously buying these crawls. <laughs> yes. In fact, <laughs> just in the comments here, the, the, the banter going back and forth, guys are talking about your baits, which we haven't even like last year, it was still kind of new to a lot of people. Obviously the viewers and the people that watch the show a lot, they, they see me using it on my videos and, and talk about it quite a bit. So words definitely getting out. I know you're growing. I know uh, with that is growing pains and keeping product in stock and, 
and all that fun stuff. But, you know, I think you're doing an amazing job so far. And I know you're, you're getting into some different retailers and we yeah. actually talked uh, a, a week or two ago. And surprisingly, uh, you mentioned there was a ta- couple of tackle stores up in Canada that started oh, yeah. and, and some big name some guys uh, kind of ransacked the, the Nico Bates uh, right yeah. out of there. If you want to talk a little bit about that, that yeah. piqued my interest a little bit. Well, I, I don't, I don't think I should say their names um, sure. um, because uh, there's quite a few pros who use our product, but we're not, we don't sponsor them and, and they, they can't really talk about them. They would, you know, offend their current sponsors. Sure. Um, but I uh, will tell you that some a couple of very big names that everybody knows that they're on TV quite a bit and uh, magazines and such were buying my buying our product up in Canada and uh, just really kind of buying a whole bunch of it. And, right. <laughs> and uh, can we talk we about, the, let's talk about the product that they were kind of gravitating <laughs> towards. And then since you can't name the names and I, I'm not going to say it either, but I'm going to give you a little hint. Uh, they're very good smallmouth anglers. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you guys kind of can put that puzzle together. Yeah. But yeah. what were they buying, man? They were buying Helger. The main thing they were buying was Helger mites. I know. Wow. Um, that that kind of blew me away because honestly, in the lineup of baits, and we talked about this, that's one thing I haven't really used a whole lot. And not saying I didn't believe you, you know, last year, but when you start telling me that some of these guys that I look up to that that dominate smallmouth yeah. fisheries, I got to take a second look at this. Yeah, a, yeah. A, a deeper look. Well, the, the Helger mites are are special. They have a special place in my heart. That was the first bait I designed. We spent two years. We tested that bait for two years, and and I I would challenge you to find any bait company that would test a bait that long. Um, before bringing it to market and it, it's just a magical bait it, there's a lot into that there's a lot of magic and a lot of know-how into that bait and um it really really puts fish on and um i, I know this sounds corny but i get love letters like a couple times a month about this bait changing their life and and uh j- just recently i got invited to a wedding in northern indiana <laughs> by two of my by my customers because the man and the woman they were they were dating and courting and going fishing and using nico and they had such a great time that they actually named their dog nico and invited me to their wedding <laughs> so that's awesome um, but but the, the baits do have the that, that kind of impact and the helgramite really does you know the helgramite is you can't catch fish on the helgramite you know you know go go fish somewhere else you know sure um so the helgramite um I'll just show you here. It's a, it's a three-inch bait. It's um, you know, it's made out of Nico's, you know, super, super stretchy material. Um, it has a lot of detail. It floats. Um, just there's a, just there's just a lot that goes into this bait here. Um, you know, you can use it. I know a lot of guys in, in lakes will drop shot it. Um, I usually just Texas rig it with a with a small hook or put it on a little jig head. Um, I've done very well top water with it. I've even, you know, people are even using it salt water now. Um, so that's that's the Elgermite here. That's that's the number one bait. That that's Nico's number one bait. That's it's, you know, it's it's the number one Elgermite in the world. Wow. So there's there's not much it can't do. Sure. That's awesome. And I mean, it's like you just said, Scott. I mean, to me, one mark of a great bait is when pros. You know, they're getting money from X, Y, and Z company, and they go behind that company's back to throw a bait. I mean, to me, that's always a sign of how good a bait really is when someone throws something that they might not supposed to be throwing because they truly believe, you know, it gives them a much better chance to put those $10,000, you know, $20,000 fish in the boat, whatever whatever they're going for. But one thing you said when you're mentioning how you fish that kind of piqued my interest, you said you'll throw it on top water a little bit. How do you go about throwing the Helgramite on the top of the water column? Um well, usually, obviously, you're going to have to use a light hook. You know? Sure. Um, so I, I'll typically, I'm a big fan of gamakatsu, so I, I typically use mostly gamakatsu hooks. Yep. I'll use a, a G-lock, um, just a one knot, you know, just a simple. Yep, Eric you know, loves that. Hook. He talks about it all the time. Um, you know, there I, I usually use a one knot, um, and a one knot is really perfect for a variety of the Nico baits. And I, I'm kind of a lazy guy, and I hate retying, so. I'll just use the one hook and uh, <laughs> if it's light enough, it'll float that hook. 
and uh, you know, uh, I, I'm not a professional fisherman by any means. You know, I think me Nico, Nico makes me. I think Nico makes me feel like a better fisherman because I, sure. you know, since I've been using Nico, I don't think I've really been out fished anywhere. You know, um, and I'm not doing anything special. You know, I, I think the baits do a lot, but my when I'm when I go to use top water. Um, if I think the fish are going to hit top water, my philosophy is that you really don't need a whole lot of noise um, because they're they're going to find it. They'll 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 they know it's there. They don't need a whole lot. So that just that light helger mite, just a little little plop plop plop, is not a not a big splash or anything, and uh, they just go for it. I just pull it forwards. Um, huh? you, can, you can pull it backwards; it doesn't matter. Um, yeah. They find it. So absolutely. Yeah, the thing about the the helger mites, for example, one bag. Um, it's for helger mites, you know, for me, I could, I tell customers, you know, you should get a thousand fish out of that bag. Um, you know, I, I could go more, you know, I've, I've never worn a helger mite out. I always lose them. Uh, you know, when I'm around 250 or something, you know, I end up losing them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there it is floating. Maybe. Yeah. I'm trying to, uh, I got the, uh, the fish tank here set up. I, I rigged up with some of these baits. So a lot of these, uh, I'm assuming a lot of these guys are using these Helger mites, especially around the Great Lakes region, are, are thinking drop shot like I am here. Yeah, I believe and, so. Yeah. Um, there's some guides I know fishing lakes here in Virginia and elsewhere, and they're primarily fishing them drop shot. Okay. Um, yep. I primarily, when I fish, I, I'm, you know, where I am, I don't have any big lakes where I am, I'm, and I don't have much time to travel, so... I'm fishing usually just these um, retention ponds and, you know, creeks and rivers. And I usually just, I usually just simply Texas rig it and that's it. That's all it takes for me. And, you know, I've been quite, quite content with its, with its pr production. So. Absolutely. And Scott, so when I go over to the Nico site here, I see what looks to be about 12 different colors of yeah, the oh, yeah. Do you have one or two in particular that are your personal favorites? Well, um, my personal favorite would be the natural. Okay. That's number five, four, four. Yeah. The natural, that's kind of covers every condition. Um, I like the green pumpkin. I like the mud bug. Um, the, the bl pure black is really, really popular. Mm -hmm. And you see that red, that red one, we call it a magma. Right yeah. here, here, I'll show you right here. This thing is a, it's a limited edition. It's, um, very, very popular. It, it just keeps on selling. And since we're on Helger mites, I will tell the the viewers here that I have uh, some very very limited number of, of uh, chartreuse Helger mites. Mm -hmm. um, they were they were limited production. They sold out. I was able to get a few more. I put them in stock for the show. There's only probably about 30 packs, and that's it. Um, and I also have. Uh, we'll talk about the. Uh, we got some interesting colors. I don't yeah, know if. if yeah, that second color there is also uh, down to about 30 packs. Um, and how about this one? The uh, that's down to about, I, I have a few more, but it's 30 packs in the warehouse and probably 30, probably 30 more where I, at home here. Okay. Um, but I mean, that color is the color of the octopus that we talked about that yep. was very successful. Um, so those are, uh, you know, really kind of partially for the viewers here because uh, I wouldn't have put those in stock normally. So, you know. Thank you. So, the Helger mite is, um, you know, by far the number one. That's that's the gateway drug for Nico. <laughs> you know, you just just use a Helger mite and, and you're going to be a Nico customer, um, I think. Um, and, you know, also last year we um, we had just come out with the leeches. Um, the, the, the leeches here. Yep. yep. Um, these have just been absolutely amazing. Um I've had a lot of, a lot of people come back and, you know, buying 10, 12 packs at a time. Um, it really, you know, again, it's that super stretchy material. It's a little bit softer than the Helger mic. So this was engineered a little bit differently um, to get a little more leech action. Um, a lot went into this bait as well. It looks like a simple bait, um, but, you know, with the proportions, ratios, sizes, rib count, section count, all that stuff was was calculated to maximize catches. Um, and also I have um, three limited edition colors 
the same chartreuse magma and we've got a green pumpkin and since we're on the leeches for the again for the viewers i just put up on the website tonight i actually have two new colors coming next week oh, um, nice they're not they're not they're not even have not even arrived yet um i don't even think they've left the warehouse yet but they will be here next week i, I did put them on the site um it seemed that black aurora and i don't know if you can see this color or not um oh. it looks like a glass with this um yeah yep. uh, almost transparent yeah, that's going to be in the leech too. That's a this is an amazing color. Um, I just love it. Yeah, so that leech is very special. I I think it's a unfortunately my fish tank here, my aquarium isn't that deep, so it's uh it's hard to show the action of that leech. Um yeah, the action is extremely natural. There's again, you know, there's when you when I was working on the tail, there was you know that those proportions are exactly like a real leech would be uh, when mm -hmm. it's so it really gives a nice action and um, this bait is like I said you know people buy the helgramites and, and they'll buy a bunch of them and and now they're coming back for the leeches and the leeches have just really performed well um, you know we we try to be the best in any category we you know that that's our goal is to be the best to make something that you know, nobody else has done to, to, to produce at a level that nobody else has and to bring happiness and, and have, have, let people have fun. You yeah. know, that's our goal is to have, have fun and enjoy being outdoors and appreciate the environment. Uh, we should say, too, because I know uh, guys are already checking out, uh, looking at the website and stuff. So I'm not sure if you can confirm this, but Chartreuse is sold out. Could that be true? Um. Hang on here. It is sold out. Now let me, but I, let me change the settings, and you can order, and it'll be. Um, they will. Uh, you can buy it in a second here. Let okay, me perfect. Oh. And we should. We should probably. We talked before the show. You're gonna. Uh, we're gonna give out a discount for everybody too that wants to make a purchase. Uh, Smallmouth Crush Ten. Is that correct, Scott? That'll work. That's right. Exactly. Smallmouth Crush Ten. Help you save some money off your order. Get yeah. that pasted in the comments for we everyone. We want to know who's who's buying all the chartreuse here. Come on, guys. <laughs> well, that was one of the colors that uh, the people who shall remain unnamed were was buying as well. I know. So, okay, so I, I sorry, I, I just fixed that uh, chartreuse. Um, you can order it. Um, basically, the uh, the chartreuse is sitting in the warehouse unboxed. So it's not in stock, but it'll be in stock tomorrow. Perfect. So go ahead and order. Um, so yeah, so the leeches and the algramites, so those are the baits that, you know, my style of fishing, those are the type of baits I use all the time. Um, you know, for me fishing, I, I felt the leech was, you know, right on par with the helgramite. And the helgramite is, is I, I just think it's just a magical bait. Gotcha. Um, so, and... D Alex, did you type a comment for me? Yes. Yeah, so okay. if I put the link in there, like on my YouTube, it won't make it a hyperlink. But if I put okay. it in through yours, it'll make it a hyperlink. I was like, so. uh, we got problems tonight. We got a hacker here. Yeah, okay. All right. We're good. <laughs> so, yeah, the link's in the comments for everyone. So you guys can go check it out. Take advantage of that discount. and. Hey, by the way, I, I just want to give a shout out, guys. Uh, Travis Myers is watching. He's in the comments. Uh talking we've had him on a past show uh he's been on the podcast as well and he mentioned we talked a lot about uh nico products i'm uh i'm listening i'm taking notes i'm doing everything he says i got the sleds from ryan in i tried the sled on a craw and actually caught a uh five and a half pounder last week on it and it did come through cover excellent i was really yeah. impressed i was in a snaggy snaggy area where uh, a lot of times, if I use, just use a regular Ned, it was hang up city. And um, I did get stuck once, but that was on some wood. But it definitely, uh, there it is. It definitely came through real well for me. So um, it's, uh, yeah, so I only, the one I'm showing you now is actually a prototype. Mm -hmm. um, I know that they've been uh, improved since then. But I, I also agree. I, 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 
have used them in the shallow rocky rivers and dragging them along the bottom and it was very difficult to get snagged um, yep so I, i'm i'm becoming a i've hadn't had a whole lot of time on them but i'm i'm very very positive on them at the moment sure, sure, what sure. I've done. yeah i i think out of out of the baits that we talked about so far uh i have to give because that leech that action was pretty cool uh seen in that tank i know that's going to work on these small mouth and I'm really intrigued with some of these special limited edition colors that you came out with. I, uh, gosh, largemouth got to eat the heck out of them too in in certain situations. So, especially they, it, that one right there. Yeah, it, it's it's an easy bait to fish. It's it just it just works. It's you know um, mm -hmm. you know I don't fish tournaments. I'm I'm just kind of like the average Joe fisherman, and a lot of what I work on is to make them e make the baits easy to fish easy to catch fish make people happy and uh, so i often fish the baits i don't use a lot of sophisticated techniques and i don't use a lot of expensive you know terminal tackle that you know and the baits don't require a lot of special stuff and i i always want to make them as accessible and easy to fish as possible and uh the leech is you know the leech you started off we were thinking drop shot we wanted the drop shot bait and but you know the leech is uh, also designed to be used on ned rigs um you know I, I the profile is such that it works great on ned rigs a lot of people use it on ned rigs mm -hmm. people are using it on trail as trailers um with a flat tail and a vertical tail um it, it's just really really versatile and, and uh, quite effective um we have the limited edition colors we've got you know the we'll have actually five of them you know chartreuse magma I have a green pumpkin um, and then two Aurora's, the regular Aurora and the black Aurora coming out next week. So, you know, that's that, that, that green pumpkin, the new, the, I guess the limited edition, if it's the same that's in this craw. Yes. Which we'll talk about. That's a really, it's almost, I want to call it transparent or almost a see-through green pumpkin. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of really what it is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, th that color was um, named before, you know, I didn't name that, that particular color. It was named before uh, by the person who created it. And, um, you know, it's, it's still green pumpkin enough, but it is a green, it's a, it's a green pumpkin. That's kind of a clear base. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's quite different. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's one of my favorite colors, you know, one of the more versatile colors. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's a green pumpkin base. So, yeah. Um, so yeah. So those are we went through the you know the crawl and the, or the uh, the helgramite and the and the um, leech, but um, we got a bunch more you know stuff. So yeah, let's hear about it. Um, well, we might as well talk about the crawl next, right? Let's do it. The crawls, the crawls are are really really unique. Um, you'll notice the. Uh, the wide stance on the claws here. Um, the claws are kind of a wide stance. Um, you know, we started off with the thought of, you know, a defensive crawl. So we wanted the pinchers spread out. Um, a lot of a lot of companies can't do this because it increases the cost on the mold. Um, also, the pinchers will get more damage when the uh, hookups and they'll get ripped off real much more easily. Um, with the Nico's material, the, the pinchers, the claws just fold up. They collapse very easily within the fish's mouth, so they never interfere with the, with the hookup. Um, you can see right there on the tank, you can see the body angles are quite unique. Mm -hmm. um, and just a tremendous amount of detail. Um, you know, you, you've, you have one there. You can see that there's actually, um, here's something, another little bit of a unique thing is each craw in the mold is unique. Um, so the chances of you having the same exact crawl at a pack is very slim. So, you know, so I'm a big fan of, you know, subtlety or, you know, of making very, very subtle changes. I, I think I'm a, you know, in a previous career, I was, had to study a lot of things about um, how organisms learn, how, how learning is embedded in their DNA, how, how, how the brains function of, of animals. And that was, um, very interesting um, 
it's very anyway it's a very interesting topic but when you apply that to bait design um you know just subtle changes make a huge difference and in, in the performance of baits and for the crawls um each crawl is slightly unique so that that you know if you lose a fish on it um and you go back with another crawl you're not going back with the same exact bait even though it looks the same to us mm -hmm. sure. um so and those things all add up to putting more fish on and um so the crawl you know the claw the crawls you know that you can tell everybody that you can see here you know they're not coming off not very easily they will eventually but you'll mm -hmm. you'll be going through a lot of fish before you lose a claw um you know these are i think when we were testing them at mi minimum of two times i think mostly they're like three to ten times stronger than any other claw that we that we tested um and just a lot of just a lot of detail even the antenna you know they're not little short straight pieces they're long at an angle yep um again you've got a you've got to mimic nature um and we do a lot of things i don't know you know travis if, if you fish these baits long enough you'll you'll realize that um we've made these baits difficult for the fish to learn about so a lot of other baits when you lose a fish and when you go back with the same exact bait a lot of times it doesn't work you got to go back with something different um you know at nico we try to make it impossible for the fish to learn that these are not the real thing and uh so there's a there's a bit of science and artistry in that and uh, so we you know we try real hard on that as well mm -hmm. yeah these craws i actually started using them on the chesapeake bay for largemouth that's that's my first experience last spring with them it's one of those deals because I guide so much. I'm out there every day. A lot of times I'm in the back of the boat. And of course, I'm allowing my clients to get perfect areas and to pitch everything and to fish whatever we were. But in this case, we were fishing some hard structure. And I was in the back of the boat. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to put a Nico Craw on. And I'm just going to pitch it way out here in the back. These guys are focused on the area where I, I believe the fish are. And I started, I remember it, man. I, I popped like four four pounders yeah from the back of the boat we hardly move and they're like dude i'm like i swear to god i am trying this for the first time i don't know anything about it i'm actually didn't expect there to be a fish over here it literally was like that and so i started throwing this quite a bit and really doing some incredible i had a lot of success uh for largemouth on this and they were they, like it just seemed to me like it was such a natural Bait. It was in an area that gets pounded constantly. I'm in there every day. Uh, yep. Many boats are in that area every day, but they're not seeing something like a real craw. They're going to see a, I don't know, pick a strike king right. craw that you know everyone else is throwing. So I, I really believe it's the full body. It's the fact that it looks like a real crayfish down there. And I did fish it as if I was one with the bait, right? I was that crayfish. I, right. I, I threw it. I let it sink slowly. I just creeped it along, stopped, paused, dead stick. I just acted like this is a crayfish next to this piling, and it's doing what a crayfish would do. It's not like jarting all over the place, and it's just kind of chilling, not knowing that there's a big bass looking at it. And then that second you, you, you move it from a dead stick position – and that fish has been staring at it, you get that bite. Yep. And so I have one of these tied on all the time now, for sure, without a doubt. Now it, it's like I, you know, it's 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 a very effective bait. It it I, I think it's hard for the fish to, you know, when they look at it, like I said, it's hard. We we've made it difficult for them to realize that it's not some you know, mass produced chunk of plastic that you might get elsewhere. Because mm -hmm. um, they'll learn. I mean, they're predators. You know, their their whole mindset is to learn. And then uh, you know, out in the out in the wilds, the the punishment for being wrong is pretty severe a lot of times. <laughs> right. <laughs> so so um anyway, yeah. So that 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 crawl, you know, I, I really didn't fish any crawls when I first started worked on a crawl. I fished a few crawls and I didn't really catch anything. And, you know, it wasn't because the baits were necessarily bad. It was just because I wasn't used to it. And uh, and I just started working on a crawl myself and never looked at another one. And uh, I put these on and, and 
you know, right now, I was, you know, maybe it's a confidence thing. Maybe it's the energy that you have when you're fishing. Um, but, you know, I, I do really, really well in the crawl. And, you know, another little silly thing, but, you know, sometimes you never know what makes a difference. You know, you don't, you don't know what puts that extra fish on sometimes. Um, but you can, again, you can use these top water and you can drag them across the top, you know, top of the water. And, uh, you know, I've caught plenty of fish that way as well. Just, right. just an, another easy way to fish. Um, I, I do, I, I do want to say you want to experiment too, depending on the depth of water, uh, with the weight, with the jig head, as you can see here, this one's tied up on actually one of my beast coast finesse jigs, uh, which is just the hook is it's designed not to have such a bul as bulky of a plastic, but it does catch them still. It does work. And so I just want to share uh, or show in the uh, in the tank what that looks like paired with the jig. But I've used it uh, on a straight jig head as well. Um, I like a little heavier because it does take a little while in the eight to ten foot of water to get down to the bottom um, with the buoyancy of that plastic and, and to be able to fish it, especially if it's windy. So don't feel, you know, if you got to go up to a quarter uh, at times, don't feel like you're going to miss bites. I mean, I've had a lot of success fishing this on a little bit heavier jig head as well, especially if you really want to feel mm. what's going on in the bottom, you got a bow in your line and, and you're around some windy conditions or current deep water, uh, definitely heavy up a little bit. On yeah. that weight, if you'd like, I think uh, uh, a one eighth will definitely sink it. Um, sure. Yep. Uh, I'm usually fishing shallow rivers, and I, I'm usually doing one eighth. And you know, I'm using uh, exposed, you know, something something like this. You know, um, it, it's just something simple. I, I usually use an exposed hook. Mm -hmm. um, I get snagged a lot less than you would normally think. I I, mean, I, I still get snagged, but. Um, because it's so buoyant, it really stands it up. It uh, when you when you're getting on a rock, it'll just stand up, and you just wiggle it, and it just pops right over it, and um, goes on. You know, you just keep on going. Um, there, there. If you're gonna, you know, use an offset hook like this, um, you know, I design it for a two aught and three aught hooks, using gamakats as the standard. Um, but here's a four aught. It'll take a four aught. And mm -hmm. uh, I know a lot of. I've seen a. When I look online and everybody's catches, this seems to be the way people are fishing it the most. Right. Um, but I don't normally fish it this way, but, you know, usually something more simple like that. But, you know, it, it it's just a, it's just an awful good bait, you know. It's a, it's a little big for where I fish for smallmouth, but um, when I look around at, at customers and what they're fishing and what they're catching, then, you know, that really, you know, it, it's pretty good size for that. Right, right. Uh, somebody in the comments uh, asked, is there going to be a smallmouth crush approved goby bait? Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I actually, uh, let's. Th that's a good transition into another uh, bait that I've started using quite a bit. And it's the tadpole. Yep. And it looks just like you would, it looks like a tadpole, right? But guess what? I also believe that's a very good goby imitator especially for the great lakes or any body of water that has a goby i've had a lot of success throwing this on a, a drop shot uh for big smallmouth i've caught a lot of big smallmouth on this um the tadpole and the helgramite the very my very first time i put them on and cast i caught a big bass um so i think my very first cast with the tadpole i think i got about a it's like a three and a half four pound bass um the tadpoles, they do, you know, you know, you, you, they look like a, a variety of things. You know, you, mm -hmm. you mentioned gobies. Yep. Um, uh, I used to have a brown one that was the exact color of a uh, mad tom or a stone cat. Sure. And it looked just like that to me. And uh, they're mm -hmm. very effective. Um, you know, you know, before the helgramites came out, I, I the tadpoles and the shrimp were my go-to smallie baits. Um. I put them on. I, I most of the customers, I think, drop shot them. Yeah. Uh, I again, I usually just Texas rig them. Sure. With a Gamakatsu G lock, and I'll show you here in a second. I just go right through the shaft of the tail. You know, 
Here's one rigged right. I'm, I'm, the hook's actually going right through the tail. You can see it there. You know, you can you can still do this. You're not going to pull the tail off, not very easily. You know, you should still go maybe. For me, it seems like I go about 20, maybe 25 catches before that tail you know, gets too dangerous. Then you just change the location a little bit. But, you know, that's the way I do it a lot of times because this is very versatile. I can use leeches, algramites, tadpoles, uh, shrimp, other baits, you yeah. know, with that. So. That uh, the tadpole, yeah. So the tadpole, the tadpole has got ten colors, um, and I'm almost out of mud bug, but I've got more coming. I get another production of mud bug color coming in. So. I, I really like your your just your normal green pumpkin color. I use that quite a bit. Uh, I also have some crazy colors here that I'll be throwing on on the bed this yep. coming season as well. Um, drop shot. I also Ned rig it. Yep. So I, you can fish on a small Ned rig very well. Yep. And if you pay close attention to a couple of my videos last year, you may have caught it. Of course, that, that Beast Coast uh, open water sniper jig, I have put the tadpole on the back of this plenty of times, and it it's killer. I actually uh, I only had one of these jigs in, in the garage. They're all out in the boat, and I didn't want to go out in the rain and get it before the show. I was going to rig a tadpole on. I might be able to by the end of the show here to show share with you what that looks like on a jig but it's a very versatile bait yep. um you know we shared this story last year uh i was hoping eric hopefully he'll jump on to uh share yeah. that but we funny story i i lost a fish on that on that tadpole and like i don't know a month later we caught a smallmouth that spit up that same tadpole in an area of the lake that i mean i'm certain that's that same bait and it's a mystery how that even happens so um but we've i've caught i've been on trips where you'll throw us like a normal just any type of drop shot bait and the guy that's got the tadpole and gets it down there um man they'll and it's normally instantly what i think it is is when it's on that drop shot with that heavy weight and that's sinking quickly to the bottom and that weight hits the bottom that tadpole is almost does a, a quick bounce. Yep. And then it settles in perfectly. And that's right when you get that bite. A lot of times it's on that first drop instantly. You know how it is, guys. If, if any of you guys do smallmouth fishing out deep and you're looking them on the graph and you're pitching that bait to them, there's sometimes where you have to like dead stick or really work that fish. Oftentimes, and it's very it's noticeable that I'm actually, you know, I'm sharing this with you. It's noticeable that. A lot of times it's on that first drop, instantly you get a bite. And it's like, wow, it it's on. So what you're saying is almost the weight of the, you know, the fall brings it down. The bait will go down a little bit, but it'll float right back up once it gets to the bottom. And that's that little bounce that triggers that strike, Travis. Is that kind of what you're saying? Yep. Yep. Awesome. Oh. Well, the tadpole, it has less material. I mean, it's a little less buoyant than some of our other baits. So that's, that's probably, that's probably what happens. Um, I, I've, I've always, I know this sounds kind of weird, but you know, I, you know, I, I, I fish Nico baits like everything, everywhere, every different way. And um, I've always, I've always told people that the tadpole is a bait of passion. It just, there's something about that bait where the fish just really, really hit that hard. Um, and if they don't hit it, um, it, it's kind of the same way. It's like, uh, uh, they, they're like scorned lovers, you know, <laughs> like, you know, but but really, it, it, it's, it really brings on, there's a, many, many times I've been fishing and times have been tough. Um, I want to do something different and I look at my bag and I see a tadpole, I'll put it on. And a lot of times that, that makes a difference. Absolutely. And so I wanted to ask you, Scott, and this might be a good segue into, you know, a conversation about what makes the Nico plastic different than everything else that's out there on the market. But just trying to be a little creative and thinking outside the box. When I look at that bait, I would think, you know, maybe I could try and take some scissors and split that tail on the tadpole and give it two little halves of a tail. So my first question would be one, I know the Nico plastic's a little different. Is it even possible to cut that tail or would it, is the plastic be yeah. durable for that? <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, the, the, the plastic's durable enough to do that. Um, okay. It's, but the plastic's very resilient. So if you, when you actually, you go to cut it, it's going to be a little, it's going to be, squiggling and and, and you know, tough to get 
to the right. But if you can split it, I mean, it's not going to hurt that at all. Um, you know, if you're into split things, we ha I, di I didn't uh, bring any for the show, but we have uh, little squid strips. Um, and they those things have amazing action and do really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, I'll, I'll fish those just like a worm. You know, I'll Texas rig them, put them on uh, jig heads. And they they got really, really thin tails, double tails. And those those have worked really, really well. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're tough to get people to buy. You know, I could go out and catch a bunch of fish on them. But uh, you try to tell somebody to use a squid strip for bass. Um, you know, unless somebody famous has done it, they're not going <laughs> to they're not going to do right. it. But um, but they're really, really nice um, as well. And uh, we do have a, a strip. Mate. We actually make a uh, a five foot strip. Um, so Nico, one of Nico's the only company in the world that has figured out how to extrude this product, this material. I'm the only one in the world that can do it. And we have a few extruded baits, not poured. You know, extruded like toothpaste coming from a tube. Um, and we have a five foot strip, and it's just a simple strip. But if you want something different. Um, I like for me, I, what I do is I'll usually just cut a, maybe a, like a 10 inch section. I'll fold it in half and use it as a double tail and, uh, catch is easily as catches fish. Um, but if you want to, you can cut it, you can punch holes in it. You can customize it any way you want. It was wow. really designed as an attractant, um, really for saltwater. Um, but, um, it really works, you know. You know, when you're in the bait business, there's always a joke about what's the difference between a saltwater bait and a freshwater bait, and the answer is the price. Um, <laughs> right. That's what I saw. Um, uh, so, you know, those those strips are also quite effective and add an interesting touch, and you can do a, a very unique presentation. Um, you know, with with it, so you can put you can do stuff that fish haven't seen before. Certainly, so, yeah, and I don't I mean I'd imagine that five foot strip might last you five or more years that thing's got to be pretty yeah you know, yeah you know we were you know we were making big rolls of it for commercial fishermen in the pacific and um everyone loved it so much that people on the on the wharf you know on the dock when they're coming in everybody was um wanting it and then uh nico did a few experiments with it and everybody loved it and it worked well just about everywhere you know japanese are really good at, at customizing maximizing and really great at creatively using materials and designs. And um, that's just one of the products that comes from that. And, you know, it, it's, it, it may sound, maybe it sounds gimmicky because it's so different than anything else, but if you're into really customizing and adding attractants and doing things, um, that that's one, that's certainly one product to look at because it's, it's easy to work with. Um, you know, you mentioned the material, um, so I guess for you know some people have if people have used Nico before they'll they'll I think they'll all testify that the material is really special. Um, it's quite different than really anything out there. It's in the um, you know it, it's in the elastomer style of plastics or super plastics. Um, uh, Nico's worked with this this only one kind of plastic for over fifty years. Um, they spent probably you know, off and on maybe 10 years working on this before they released their first bait. Um, this is the Nico in the, in the family of plastics, every, every property, everything that you get, if you want one pro particular property, you get trade-offs. And so if you look at the other super plastics on the market, all of them have made trade-offs. And so there's really, really difficult to do it all to get the, you know, the, 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 at the top at the Lexus, you know, like whether, you know, whatever, whatever that premium is, because uh, it's, it's so difficult to get all those properties at the same time. And uh, Nico is the only company that has, has been able to do that. And, you know, I, I maybe there's a few people who know, but Nico makes plastics for four of the world's most famous high end, well-respected global fishing companies. And Nico's a small company, and they they could go to China or Indonesia or even the U.S., um, but they go to Japan. Nico's not the cheapest, but Nico is absolutely can do things that nobody else does. And if you fish the plastics long enough, I think you'll you'll start to get a feel for for how that is. 
Scott, Absolutely. David in the uh, comments ask, and I noticed this on my on my tadpoles, it does come off in the water, but what is the chalky white substance on, on your plastics, uh, like specifically the green pumpkin uh, tadpole? I'll see that. Yes. So the tadpole, um, there's a couple baits. Um, if When you first get Nico baits, they're sticky. Uh, I think every, you know most people have, have felt that. So... Um, the, so the baits, when the tadpoles, will have a little powder on them so they don't stick inside the packs. And that, that I believe that powder is talcum powder. So it just washes off. It's the yeah. same stuff that you would put on your baby's bottom, you know. Um, so it uh, it just washes off later on. So the, 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 the powder is completely harmless, um, as far as we know, talcum powder. Um, mm -hmm. And it washes off. It also prevents memory. So um, if you had any, any issue at all with a Nico bait, it would probably be memory. Um, so if you crumple up the baits and leave them for a month, they're going to they're going to memorize or retain some of that uh, shape. Um, and I've done a lot of experiments over the years, even with, especially with tadpole tails. I mean, I fished crumpled up tadpole tails and, you know, me personally, um, I caught plenty of fish. I didn't really feel like I suffered anything for having a crumpled up tail. Um, but I also know that it, it takes away from the aesthetics and the art of fishing because you want that tail to move. You want to feel good about when you make a catch that you that you imparted action on that tail and you got the fish. You know, it's all part of the reward and, and the, the high of catching fish, you know, and, and being part of that. But But that's why that's the powder. And we have it on our um you know our minnows you know this is a clear bait you can see the tails a little bit white here you know we have it on the on the tails there just um but that's what the powder is so the powder only the powder comes in the octopus the tadpoles and on the tails of the minnows okay and i think those are the only three baits sure piles. um speaking of the octopus let's talk <laughs> about that i uh your secret's out, by the way. It's out now. Guys, this is, uh, I'll just play a little video here in the background. Uh, this was my first day, really, last, I think it was last last July, uh, using it on a drop shot. And I had one of the best days in a long time out there. Granted, I was around some, some big fish, but it was so... <sighs> It's such an unusual bait that nobody has, yep. and, and it works. And, I mean, I, 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 if you guys haven't seen this video, you can check it out on my YouTube channel. Um, I don't know. I'm just – I'm catching – I just caught a ton of fish. And you could see, as we're going through this, we'll let it play. But I'll, I'll also throw – we'll keep that screen small. You guys should still be able to see that. So there's the uh, there's the octopus on the drop shot, and this is a great color. This is the color of choice because I've you know there's a limited amount of colors right now, right, right Scott? Yeah, yeah, there is. That that color right there is called the black aurora. So it, it looks it looks like a smoky gray, but once everything washes off, it has a little bit of a purplish hue to it. Yep. Um, that that smoky color is actually 100% natural squid ink that's built into the bait. So, I love how the tentacles like you can just imagine in the current and just even dead sticking that there's still movement, right? Yep. And then any little, and I'm not moving this much with my hand here, but you can get real crazy. You can you can create a lot of action with that, and it's just a perfect little. Obviously, it's going to drive smallmouth crazy. That's that's just the perfect little drop shot bait for me. And I think you were using the two and a half inch most. Of yes. The time. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So the octopus are one of Nico's more successful lines. They come in one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half, six, and we do an eight inch for commercial fishermen. Um, so yeah, so that's that's been a very successful line of baits. Very effective. Um, you know you've uh, the the when people are drop shotting the two and a half inch is by far the most popular size for drop shot mm -hmm. um, and there's other ways to fish it 
um, uh, you can, it's difficult to fish exactly like a tube. I mean, a lot. I think a lot of people want to compare it to a tube. Sure. Um, but I, I kind of struggle when I fish it exactly like a tube. I, I, don't, I don't really. I struggle a little bit sometimes, and I, I don't think that that's the optimal way to do it. Um, but I think the octopus is something that you, um, if you're not going to drop shot it and fish it other ways, um, you should play around with a little bit um, and, and find your find what really works. And for me, what I'll do is I'll just shove a, a bullet weight in the head and I'll just swim it. And, you you know, I just impart whatever action I want on it. And, you know, I, I fish Nico enough. I, I, I pretty much know how deep I am and how close to the bottom I am and try not to get muck or get snagged. But, um, and that's always done really well for me. And, you know, also something interesting like the you can double up the octopus. Like you can put a smaller octopus inside the larger octopus. You can uh, mix and match the colors. You can provide more bulk. Um, I, I, you know, I know this sounds crazy, but I'll sometimes shove a shrimp inside the octopus as a shrimp trailer, an octopus with a shrimp trailer um, and fish it that way. And the fish love it. I mean, you just, you just play around, you experiment. And um, you know, I've, I've, always tell everybody I, I i've never learned so much about fishing and fish and you know how to make baits and everything else until i until i started fishing nico and uh there's just a lot of creative things that you can do that they just they just work they put mm -hmm. fish on yeah and and here's the coolest part about this you can literally uh it doesn't come off the hook like when a, a smallmouth jumps or it, it just it stays it's very durable uh, I don't, I might've went through, I don't even know if I went through two baits on that trip and I've caught, I caught a hundred fish that day in that stretch. No, you won't, you won't wear them out. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they're super stretchy. They, um, this is a three and a half year, you know, it's, you, you're not going to wear them out and, you know, you'll lose them. You'll abuse them. You'll probably throw them away before you actually yep. ever wear one out. Um, the heads are hollow. It's got a hole through the head. You can, you know, you can put it in line if you want. Um, very versatile. Um, I will do something for the viewers. Another little special thing. Okay. Is um, I, you know, Nico is Nico has a lot of world firsts. You know, Nico innovates a lot faster than we have the marketing ability. <laughs> so um, they come out with all these ideas before any of us can, uh, you know, sell them. But here's a here's an octopus here. It's a clear bait, um, but it has glow flake in it. The flakes glow. So you can maybe yeah, you can, right now I think you can see a little bit of the flake in there. It looks a little cloudy. Yeah. So this flake will actually glow. It ref the light from the glow will refract within the bait. It kind of looks like a bioluminescence type of sp spooky thing. Um, but I I have these and uh, I don't have them on the website so. Um, I have, uh, a, 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 one that glows green. We call it a red glow. The, the flake's red, but it glows green. Uh, uh, one that glows blue, one that glows orange. And I have one that's just nothing but hologram flakes in it, you know, clear baits. So, you know, if anybody wants that, you guys can go ahead and order a, an octopus and then just along with the order, tell me, Hey, I want a glow flake bait and I'll substitute that out for you. Okay. Um, I don't put these on the website. Um, I actually don't even offer them normally. Um, it's just kind of a, a special niche thing. Um, a lot of people don't understand the value of having clear baits. Um, you know, clear baits, it, that's one of the things that I also learned, you know, with Nico is fishing clear baits. Um, when you have a good design, you know, when you have a good design color, it really doesn't mean a lot. Um, you can still do very well with a clear bait, but a lot of times fish will hit a clear bait when they won't hit any other solid colors. Mm -hmm. and, um, so this is one option for, for everybody. And um, la last year I had a little surge on octopus and I ran out and I, uh, some customers had to wait a month or more and I offered them uh, to substitute with these and they were contacting me and they were buying like 10 and 12 packs and I was doing special orders with me. <laughs> so um, the guys liked them. But they, they are not, they're, they're not generally for sale. Uh, but if you do want them, like I said. What size do you have in that color? Right, or in that color? <laughs> I have, um, 
Actually, all the octopus are available. So one and a half, two and a half, okay. three and a half, four and a half, and six. Yep. Um, now I don't have every combination there is, um, but if you you if you guys want them, you just tell me, and I will substitute those out for you. Um, hmm. Now the octopus are really nice, and uh, you know another interesting thing is, like I say, everything floats, and I've I've fished everything there is top water with Nico, and the tentacles will just sort of spread out. You know, when you pull up, they go in, they spread out. You can, it gives this nice action. And, uh, you know, I've done, I've done, I've been quite happy and content with uh, the performance fishing those top water as well. Well, last year when we had you on and you, you went through your whole lineup, that was a bait that I was unfamiliar with, right? So you sent me a bunch of these and uh, I'm, I'm a believer. I, I shared that video with a lot of people and got some comments that it was helpful and others were like, keep your mouth shut. Um, so, um, part of, probably because of you, um, the, the octopus and well, Nico in general has become quite, is really growing rapidly in, in the great lakes. And, and I've had stores in Canada contact me now. And the most recent story I had was when they were stocking, when they got their shipment of Octo, uh, Nico products and they were putting them on the shelf, they actually sold out of the octopus as they were putting them on the shelf hmm. and uh, <laughs> the entire lot went. And um, so now they've got a big lot arriving probably next week. But um, the, uh, yeah, so the, the octopus has done really well. Um, again, Travis, I think a lot of it's probably because of you, because you've got a lot of Great Lakes area viewers. Mm -hmm. um, I've been contacted by stores, mostly on, um, mostly Ontario and Superior. Um, but apparently a lot of money has been won and a lot of money has been put in people's bank accounts with Nico up in the Great Lakes. Yes. And um, the stores have been, when they're buying, they're buying tadpoles, halgrimites, leeches, and octopus. So mm -hmm. there's only one person I know of that, uh, that pioneered the octopus up there. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I, uh, I decided to uh, talk about one another technique, another bait that you guys make that will probably uh, put some big smallmouth in the boat. And I'd like to share that with you guys right now. Um, I'll let you talk about it. I'm just going to go to the tank here with the camera. Okay. Right. And uh, share you guys uh, this little special gem. I'm, I'm not even sure what it is exactly. Dun, 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 dun. Surprise. Oh Ooh. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yes. The squid, guys. Yes. About as legit as you can get. Check out the eyes on that. Check out the action. That's on the Ned rig. You kidding me? Yep. Yeah. That's um. That's a that's a really unique bait. Yes, it is. Um, when you first felt it, you probably realized it was extra soft. Extra soft. And it was probably extra stinky. Yes. Yeah. That um. I'll show you here in a second. Um, that particular model there, it looks like it's, we, I think we call that one a natural. Yeah, that's the natural color. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, this is. It's got the green and red flake, I think. Yeah, it's in Japanese, man. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, you know, we're still working on that. It's, I um, mean, there you go. Yeah, it, is, it does say natural. There you go. Yep. Um, yeah, go ahead. I'm going to, I'm just going to share one more deal on a, on a, on a jig head. There you go. Okay. That's, that's the ticket right there. Yep. Um, a lot of our, you know, the pro staff and, and people who fish that bait really, really love it on, on the, on a skirted jig like that. Mm -hmm. Um, now I usually fish it like on the right, just bare by itself. Sure. Yep. Um, Part of that's because of my job, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'm always trying to determine the effectiveness of, of baits and how to fish them just as they are. Um, you know, it's, I, I can't always show other people's products, you know, as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm usually fishing them pure. Mm -hmm. So that particular bait, it's made out of a, a, a again, it's another Nico first, uh, world first. It's a, called Dappy. Um, Dappy means molt. 
like a, when an insect or a crayfish molts, mm -hmm. as soon as it molts, it's super soft. So they engineered this plastic to be that soft. And so that's, that's the DAPI plastic. It gives a lot of action. It's not quite as durable um, because they're, they bulk it up and, and it's super soft, but it's still far more durable than anything else out oh, there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can stretch it. Yep. So I'll tell you this. Yeah. See that right there? That's what makes these different is this black in here is actually, you know, squid extract. I mean, that is, it's like 150 times more concentrated than the rest of the other, than the rest of our lineup. Yep. Wow. And when you open these packs, they stink. You know, they smell like squid. And, you know, I, I've got actually got one here that, you know, you had here. They are super, you know, this this pack has been open for probably, I, I've actually had this sitting around for two years in a, in a plastic bag. <laughs> and, and it still smells. It's, it's, it's really, really, you know, I, I kind of like the smells, but I know a lot of people kind of, you know, gag and stuff. But, but it is super stretchy. Um and it's got these eyeballs. The eye, the eyes really, you know, provide more profile. <clears throat> so one of the concepts that is uh, Nico worked on here was everybody else in the market in this, the scent deliveries. You have either surface application, right? So you'll you'll apply it onto the surface and cast it out there, and and so you provide this, you know, this broad stream, this dispersion of of scent. Um, then there's uh, you can build the scent into the bait, soak it or build it into the bait. So Nico does that as the default. So every every Nico bait has a scent built into the plastic. So you actually just stretch the plastic to recharge the scent. Um, but with these Dappy baits, and we have uh, some scent balls with the same concept, is this super concentrated scent provides a third option for your you know your scent delivery or performance, and that is instead of just this broad, even, you know, a uniform dispersion of scent, as the fish gets closer, it, that, that scent is very concentrated. It's one spot. And as the, you know, when they bite, let's say they get onto it, when they bite it, it actually provides a burst of flavor or scent. Um, I don't know if fish feel, I don't know if in the fish world, I don't know if it's flavor or scent, right? But um, they get this burst. So um, this was originally tested in salt water um, for deep sea fishing for like snapper and stuff. And so what happens is the fish, when they, when they, when they bite on it, you, you know, you've seen studies about, you know, the fish can um, take a bait, you know, swish it around in its mouth and spit it back out in like what 0.2 seconds, I think something like that. Um, so what this bait was designed to do was when the fish is swishing it around in his mouth, he's getting more and more flavor. He's, that, that fish is, you know, in human terms, that fish is being convinced that this is not a piece of plastic. This is the real deal because he's, he's experiencing actual natural squid um, extract here. And so the fish will complete the bite. And by completing the bite, um, you get to hook the fish. And so, uh, you know, originally, you know, like I said, the original design was for saltwater. Um you know, people are paying like hundreds and hundreds of dollars to go out on a boat and fish for a very expensive fish. And those fish are 300, 400, 500 feet down. And there's a lot, you know, you lose a lot of sensation along the way. So if that fish is not hitting hard, a lot of times you, you won't feel that bite. And so this bait was designed to, to solve that. And again, you know, to get back to the word Nico, Nico means daily happiness, to bring people happiness by going fishing, having fun, you know, enjoying the outdoors. And th that was one bait that was designed with that in mind. Mm. And um, so, yeah, that's it's a it's a special bait. Um, a lot of people have had a lot of success, especially on those jigs like you like you had there. Yeah. Um, I guess uh, the, as far as colors, I do like that natural. I don't know if you have this. This one Blue white, yeah. Um, when I'm fishing for in fresh water, I tend to like the glow white. I like the natural. Mm -hmm. And there we go. We have a moss green that does pretty well too. It's kind of a weird green for okay. water fishing, but that's that's done really well. I haven't used that one. Um, and. For a few, I only have like six packs. 
but if someone's interested, I have a hologram flake one. You can see the flakes. Yeah. Um, that's. Can you set one of those aside, sir? Yeah, okay, I'll set this one aside. Thank you. Um, you know, I only have a few of those, um, but and they're not on the site again. This is kind of this is kind of the, one of the benefits of having a pro and listening to a program like this. Um, you know, you can get something that's really not available elsewhere. Yes. And, um, you know, you can just just buy a squid and then ask for the substitute. The only one I have, it's not listed as a hologram. I've only got about six. Uh -oh. um, yep. Yeah, they're asking. Uh, Steel asked what color was in the tank. That was uh, natural. The natural. The natural was in the tank. Yeah, the natural. And listen, this this is going to be fish for me. A, a lot of you guys can just fish this like you would a Ned head, a, a Ned rig. Yep. Okay. Yep. This is going to show the, this is going to give those fish a different look. Everyone's throwing your standard three inch Ned. Put that on. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I can't stress it enough. You're and it's <laughs> it's that it's it's heavily scented. It, you know the tentacles removed, so you can let you can let the bait do a lot of the work for you. Mm -hmm. You, know, you don't have to rush it. You don't have to impart a lot of action on it. So I've had three questions here pop up. Guys are saying, uh, I keep seeing new stuff. Um, I placed an order a little while ago. Uh, will you be able, I know it's hard sometimes. Will you be able to try to maybe figure out shipping and, and stuff like that for these guys? Or how's that going to work? Okay. Just maybe so, hold off to the end or I don't know. Um, if you, if you order twice, if, if you see, if you want to grab a bait early on and then you want to get something later on, um, on your second order, tell me you already ordered. Okay, so if you if I know you already ordered, I will combine the shipping or or and make sure you get everything just right. Um, there's a it's you know I, I I I put the settings so that I for tonight anything tonight I'm going to review every order before I send it off to the warehouse to make sure that anybody who wants substitutes anybody who orders twice will be taken awesome. care of before uh, you know before before things get sent out. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, so th those squids are really nice. And, um, you know, we have uh, we have a bunch of other cool stuff. I know. Let's talk about For it. For sure. All right. Which one you want? <laughs> oh, goodness. Well, I'll tell you one thing I haven't thrown much, and I, I really want to, is your swim bait. And I think it would be excellent – on an Alabama rig, um, you know we've had some some Alabama uh, rig anglers in the past here in the last couple of weeks, and I actually I have your uh, your Winnow ninety five lined up on one of them yep. that I ordered um, with Brown Dog Tackle, and I have them ready to go, and I just need to I need to throw them more. You know what I mean? Yep. I haven't. I know you talked about it last year. Talk to me a little bit more about that that swim bait, please. Okay, the swim bait um, is really, uh, and I know this sounds you know a little bit bragging or something, but this this is the bait that will has really set the standard going forward for swim baits um, for a lot of reasons. There's a there's so much that went into this as well. Um, first of all, it's the same Nico material, right? You're not going to get a lot of nipped off tails. Um, Very you know, we still have a prototype up in Pennsylvania that's still going after like 150 catches. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, um, Travis, someone you may actually know up in Wisconsin. Um, I, uh, the last I heard, they were like 80 and like 30 of them were pike. Uh, oh still going. Um, so, you know, so with this material... Um, first of all, you've got the durability. You're not going to be changing it all the time. You're not going to be losing it. Um, so this, this, this particular swim bait has a lot of, a lot of features. So we'll start with the, um, the most obvious that people look at and see the zigzag ribs. Yes. So the zigzags go all the way around and they transition to smooth, to straight as you go through there. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> So when you think about what are the purpose of the ribs anyway, right? The ribs are broadcasting a certain frequency or vibration through the water to, to broadcast its presence, that there's a swimming fish here. You know, hey, look at me. I'm a swimming fish. Come and eat me. Um, but they don't always work all the time. And one of the reasons is because fish are not always in tune with 
the particular frequency of vibrations mm -hmm. in the water. So what this bait does, this bait has um, starts with zigzag all the way around, and then it transitions to smooth. So what you do is you it broadcasts a broad spectrum of frequencies. So when the fish are finicky, hard to get on, you know, with this style of bait, this bait will cover, will, will more likely cover a particular frequency that will get that fish interested in this bait. Yeah. Um, so that's one. Um, the, um, the, the other thing is um, the, the action is really, really something. Um, it's when I, when we set out to design this, I wanted a slow retrieve bait that was stable at high speeds. You so you could rip it without rolling it or, you know, having it on its side and making it look, feel very unnatural. Um, so if you look at this bait, I'm going to try to show you here. You can see a triangular, yep. see a triangular mm -hmm. shape. Um, it also has a, um, it's kind of hard here. It has a, uh, a swollen belly here. So this belly acts as a keel, a triangular shape. Um, what that does is it stabilizes it uh, when you can rip it at high speed. So you can actually like troll these things. You know, I, I was down in Florida last year and uh, we were like heading out into, heading out. You know, we weren't really fishing. We left the port and uh, we the, the guy just threw it out to watch it. And you know, we're going at high speeds and this thing was very stable. Um, so that's, um, so you can rip them and, um, you know, look at this, look at, look at the collapsibility of this and it just folds right over. So, you know, a lot of the baits are harder plastics. They're going to they interfere with the hookup. Um, this just collapses so well, and you can see how a slow retrieve, you know, it doesn't take much to move that tail. Um, I know some, I know of some guys, uh, actually Nico rigging this on the Susquehanna. Um, they'll just, they'll just drop it down there and just let the tail move. And uh, just drop it down where they think there's fish, and, and they do really well with that. Um, but the want to get back to the action, yeah. The action, yeah, it's, yes. it's it just hit me, yeah, yeah. It, the, the, it's got the paddle, of course, it's got a pretty big boot on the back, hmm. um, but it also has a snake motion. So while it's while it's swimming, that flexible material is has a snake motion and it has a long frequency roll to it. So you've got three simultaneous swimming actions at the same time. Um, it's very attractive to the fish. Um, it's just um, it's just a marvelous bait. You know the heads the heads at a size that you can cut it off. It'll fit on a lot of heads very easily. Mm -hmm. it's got it's got markers on the bait so that you can rig it straight and, and true. Um, it's got uh, marks on the tail so that now Travis, you mentioned the, um, the Alabama rig. Mm -hmm. um, I know some people fishing on Alabama rig and, and some of them say that they, it's a little, the action's a little too much. Okay. And so we anticipated that. So we put markers on the tail. So if you like this bait <clears throat> and you want to fish it on Alabama rig and you think there's too much action, you can actually trim your tails and you've got markers all over the tail so that you can cut that down and, and uh, shorten it up or you can cut the head off and, and, oh, and, and that, tighten yeah. it up that way. Um, there's really, um, it's extremely versatile bait and just like, and the also you keep going here. Um, the, the other thing about the, the ribs are, are really, really thin. It's made of soft plastic as it's moving through the water, the ribs actually flex and move. So it provides a, again, it provides a living profile to the fish. So you're broadcasting a broad frequency. The ribs are, are flexing as it goes through. Um, it's really a very effective bait through all of the testing that we've done. Um, you know, when the other swim baits are just straight ribs, it's a very monotone approach. Yeah. Now, if the fish are on that frequency or, or they're just hitting, you know, that's fine. But on tougher days, you know, when they're not hitting that, um, the Nika winnow has really come through when nothing else will. Um, and lastly, it holds, if you're into scent, those zigzags really, really hold scent really well. Um, so it's extremely versatile. It does everything that you want to do. You, if you name any swim bait out there that, that has a great motion, that does certain things, uh, this, this does it and, and more. And, um, you know, that's our, those zigzags, by the way, were impossible to make with traditional molds. Um, 
Nico had to go to a, a several very high tech industries with this problem. How do we make this pay? And we had to, they borrowed equipment and uh, well, we didn't, I mean, we didn't, you know, we went to other companies and had various things made so that we could make this bait. Um, but traditional mold makers, that's why you don't see it. I mean, I'm sure we're not the first person, the first company to think of zigzags, right? I'm sure somebody's thought about it, um, but nobody's been able to do it. Mm -hmm. And the yeah. reason is because it takes, it, it, even though it looks really, really simple, it, it took us like a year of, researching high-tech industries <laughs> looking for equipment <laughs> and technical know-how to actually get that done and wow. uh, so that that bait is really if you're into swim baits um this will save you a ton of money you know you're not doing one or two catches so those ribs put out uh, a lot of air bubbles on that hop on the bottom yeah yeah that, that it works too that yeah yeah um, and and again it's, it's a very customized like for example if you didn't want air bubbles and you wanted a heavier bait you could Stick it in water and squeeze it with your hand and get water in, in the grooves, right? Get it between the ribs and then cast it out. Um, and then you're not going to have as much air in it when it when it lands. Um, or if you want more air in it, you shake all the water out and cast it out. Um, and then you'll get some more air bubbles. It's, yeah. it's fascinating that you mentioned those zigzags and the frequency that it emits because I think that's something, you know, especially with Eric being on here a lot, that's people talk about that with crankbaits all the time, you know, certain, you know, certain square bills, lipless, what have you, they all have a different vibration and frequency, but that's the first time I've ever heard it talked about for a soft plastic swim bait, because like you said, every, pretty much every plastic swim bait on the market just has those straight lines. And, yeah. you know, and Travis, you know, when he's up there on the big bodies of water and everyone's just chunking and winding those swim baits, you, you throw can, the you window can, out there. You can there fish this like a Ned rig. You can fish yeah, this. I, I, I hope people do. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't I, think you would believe, mention that, Travis. Believe it or not, I'm, I'm I, just looking at. I haven't. No, this is not something I've tried yet, but I'm going to. But I actually have a customer who buys them. He clips off the boot and fishes them like Nedra. Yes, I, I kind of. Yes, I see that. And um, I haven't done it yet. Um, but, oh heck uh, yeah! So you know, it, it's a it's just extremely Shit. versatile. Save if you if you fish this style of bait, you will save so much money. Now these baits are. Um, $14.99 for five of them. And a lot of people get scared at that. Um, but if you fish Nico and you fish these, these baits, you'll realize that dude, that's a pretty darn good bargain. Um, unless you're casting in the trees all the time, um, <laughs> you know, you're going to, you're going to save a ton of money. So, and catch a lot of fish. So what do you think? Maybe, um, I mean, you could swim that through grass pretty well too. Uh, yeah. if you Texas rig that and, and, and put that point of the hook back through there. Yeah, it has a little groove in the back to hide the hook tip. Yeah. Um, um, so I just I just put on a pro shrooms head on this and it it it's it's very compatible uh, yeah. for that technique. And I'm sure there's a bunch of different hooks that you could use. So I'm gonna be experimenting with this a little bit. That's <laughs> one thing I, I talk a lot about or or maybe not talk a lot about, but fish a lot of swim baits but not swimming them just yep. like you mentioned so yeah it's perfect so this this you know when, when i when we set out to make this we we tried to think about what would the ideal bait be and how would we maximize our material what could nico with nico's material what can we do that nobody else can do and how can we help people catch more fish and this is the result and um this is this is by far i think the most advanced is probably the most expensive mold in the world because <laughs> that was not easy to do. Um, and, and it's the most, by far the most advanced uh, soft plastic rib swim bait out there. And this is really the, you know, I, I really think everything going forward, you know, any innovation going forward, we're going to be using this as this new standard. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm quite confident about that. And, uh, you know, I know uh, when we released it at ICAST uh, last year, uh, the reception was absolutely phenomenal and uh uh we uh we i say we should have won uh best of show but uh that's a that's a topic for another day maybe when <laughs> there's not so many people uh listening <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's simple you didn't you didn't put enough money under the under the table to get well, kind of kind of like this something yes. like that. yeah <laughs> but uh we we came within eight votes and uh those eight votes make the difference between everybody knowing us or nobody knowing us. And um, so 
yeah anyway that's um it, that that's a fantastic bait if you fish that style of bait I, i've had people um call me up you know they've seen it they wouldn't buy it they said it was too expensive and um they watched it and watched it they finally bought it and then uh and then they were they're called they told they call me up and say can you overnight them to me because i've got a tournament um so you know that's that's the kind of impact that bait will have and you mm -hmm. know it's it's also great for fresh water or i'm sorry for fresh and salt so you know it's it's a very very fan it's a fantastic bait so um and yeah. i'm gonna put some i'm gonna put some time in with that bait this year for sure yeah um no it's and you have what you just showed was our number one color that's a that's yeah a fantastic color yeah yeah that's a um it's got a um that's actually, it looks bluish, but it's actually a black core. And that core is all squid, squid ink. It's naturally scented. Um, mm -hmm. And that little blue, the flake around there is actually inside the uh, the clear exterior. And um, so, yeah. And also one little, other little thing, that little swollen belly I forgot is um, also a lot of times fish will associate that where nutrients are. And um, so that, there's a natural tendency for in the in the in the uh, the the nature um, for animals to focus where the nutrients are, and you by putting it up at the belly, you know your fish will be concentrate more on the, you know nipping less on the tail, finding that belly more attractive, and that's where the hook is. It also provides additional attractant overall as a profile, and um, again a lot of the the ratios and, and angles and stuff were. You know, we're all, you know, pretty calculated in detail as to, to, to get fish on to find. So, again, so that they, so that the fish, to go back to earlier, um, make it difficult for the fish to realize it's not the real thing. Um, so, you know, a lot of work goes into those things. Hmm. That's amazing. I mean, it's hard enough, one, to think about to put that detail into a bait. But like you said, Scott, to implement that, to make the bait still have great action while having extra detail. And that's a lot of the difference in the Nico base and the design that goes into them is just thinking of those little things. And that's certainly what sets them apart yeah. from everything yeah. else out there. I, I would love I, to. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, a uh, couple things. Uh, we just, someone mentioned, would this make a good uh, swim jig trailer? Yes, I believe it would. Yeah. It would also yeah. probably make an excellent chatter bait trailer. I'm going to actually, that'll be the first thing I, I try uh, with this. <coughs> and then if you want to hook this weedless and fish it through grass, guys are asking what size, what do you recommend like a three um i i tend i yeah i i tend to go around threes um, like an extra wide gap yeah three I, it'll, yeah. it'll take four it'll i think um well it's been a while since i had this question asked i'm pretty sure i designed it to take up to a five aught um but you know really looking at threes um yeah, you know, I, I, I tend to go around the three, you know. Sure. Nico baits are not that huge. You know, we're not making giant baits. So, you know, they tend to be around three aught. Like the right. crawls, like a two aught, three aught. Yep. Um, the winnows, pretty much the same. Okay. Um, so yeah. Um, you mentioned chowder baits. We do have a bait that, you know, it's these little minnows. Yes. Talk to me about those. Um, now... These were, these are actually, technically they're actually sand eels, but um, they have those little eyes in them. I think you've, is that the Aurora color you've got there? Beautiful mm -hmm. color. Yeah. Uh, that's amazing color. That's when I have leeches in that color next week. Um, so a lot of guys drop shot those. Um, I'll Texas rig them. Um, I also love Nico rig them. If you look at them, they've got a hollow, hollow head. And uh, you shove a nail weight in the head, and uh, they're they're great for Nico rigging. And um, where where I fish, where I fish in Virginia on the Shenandoah River. Um, it seems like. Uh, Sorry, we got a bot in the chat or something. I had to. No. Oh. Take care of that. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, I you know that that they don't, that bait always performs well, but there's about a two to three week period where. The smallmouth are kind of transitioning from summer to fall, kind of in the in between, and uh, it's almost like they've been waiting all year for that bait. 
Um, you just, I'll just Nico rig it, just toss it out there. It doesn't matter where it is. The fish will, they, they hear it coming down. They see it. They, they find it. And you can just let it sit there in the current and um, with Nico rigged, and they just grab it. They just pick it up. Um, it's really, really fun bait to fish um, that way. But what really, for the guys who fish chatter baits, that's really where the bait. They'll put this on a trailer, huh? Yeah. They'll use this as a trailer. They yeah. So the guys who fish chatter baits um, really, really like it, and they will swear that it increases their production significantly. Um, I think the reason for it is because chatter baits are loud. They're sh the, the sounds and vibrations are sharp. Um, they're really, really kind of unnatural. There's just a loud bait. And, um, you know, a lot of, of course, the fish go for them. But if you tone down, the, if you tone it down, if you provide a natural material, I mean, a naturally like a fit, like this, this bait, it, it removes those sharp edges on the vibrations. And that provides a little bit more of a, a natural appeal, I think. This is my interpretation of, you know, listening to everybody talk about what it did for them. Um, and it just it seems to increase production uh, on that. It just softens that sharpness because fish learn that sharpness is not natural. So this really, really smart fish who have been who have seen it all will start to learn that that's not natural. But when you tone it down and when you have a material that's has has designed in natural proportions and profiles and has nice action, it really smooths it out. And, uh, you know, the fish is more more easily tricked um, into biting that. So that's that's the thought that goes behind that. Hmm. Um, you know, unfortunately, you know, can't talk to a fish, but that's that's the way we that's the way we interpret things. Sounds I about imagine right, that man. would make a decent drop shot bait as well. Um, it seems, yeah. So a lot of the earlier customers will drop shot it. Um, I think most of my customers will drop shot or put on uh, us trailers. At okay. the moment. Um, and you know, again, I'm, I'm, I do different stuff with it. I fish them top water a lot. Um, the slender profile top water, um, especially when there's a lot of algae and gunk and crap all over the surface and you want to, you want a bait that's not going to pick up junk and you can drag it around. And so this bait's pretty good for that. So you can drag it over little islands of crap and then, you know, get into little clear spots and just wiggle it. And the fish know it's there. You know, you don't have to be loud and splashy all over the place. And that profile is really enticing as a top water because it's, you know, nice and slender. It's got a little fish tail on it. And I think that really, it, it's, mm -hmm. it's always done really well for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and... The other, yeah. We should. How do you say that name again? Oh, yeah. That, that's a that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knows. Um, uh, I I almost had the chance to uh, redo that bait and rename it, and I got overruled at the last moment. Okay. Um, <laughs> it, it's called Ikanago. Ikanago minnow. Ikanago. Yeah, Ikanago. Um, so. Yeah, so those are nice baits. And um, the other things I was going to, I mean, I'll just mention a few things we have new. You know, we have these little shrimp. I, I, I know most guys are not going to be fishing shrimp for smallmouth, but I've brought in plenty of smallmouth on these. Things. Yes, you, you, hinted, you hinted about that on a conversation yeah. we had. And, and oh, I, you did get one. I got a few. Okay, I forgot, didn't forgot about that. Ned rig? Now, I have I have to go back and confess because I'm a pretty la I'm a I'm pretty lazy a lot of the times. Um, so I'm just usually just I'm just using common rigging. So if I rig one bait, I'll rig the same, another bait the same way. Um, I usually Texas rig them with an offset hook, but. Um, Ned rigs are absolutely fine. I also, you know, would just, if it's not a Ned rig, it's just something simple. Just like, a, just you just, you know, just a cheap, ticket. this style. It doesn't have to be this, of course. You know? Sure. I think most people would fish with a better, better jig than that. But yeah, so Ned rigs um, also work really well. 
Um, you know, these baits are, again, super stretchy. They're really soft. It's that dappy material. Yeah. Um, and you get, um, um, when the hookups, you, you can see how thin you can, you can see how thin you can do them with that. Know. You know, it's um, the hookups. Um, again, uh, for me, these are really great top water. <laughs> again, I mentioned Where are you water. fishing this top water? You in like some little stream, right? No, well, I'm fishing like just various uh, stormwater management ponds, uh, streams, okay. um, river, you know, like maybe the Shenandoah. Um, what I was going to say was the material is so soft that like a lot of Nico material, it collapses when the fish hit it. And it you'll get a, I, I, you, you get a better hookup ratio overall because the bait's not bouncing around. And this bait, this bait is just like collapsing in the fish's mouth. So when I unhook the fish, I often notice that the hook went through the bait maybe two times extra before it hooked the fish because it just collapses so well. All right, I'm going to throw this this year. Um, so those are those are brand new. They I, I just got those last week. Um, so those are really nice. And like I said, you, you can see how see how thin you can go with these. That and that really is a testament to the to the material. Um, and they smell nice. Um, so Travis, I'm curious with both that shrimp and the and the crawl we talked about earlier. Are those baits that you could see, you know, yourself or someone else punching like heavy mats with those style of baits? They're going to stand up down there. They're slender. Is that a <coughs> common technique? Because I know we talked a lot about finesse applications for all these baits, but could you use them with the the heavy weight on there? I think so. I think as as anglers and and the market and the uh, I don't I would say gimmicky baits, but just the the normal got to have a flappy thing or you got to have a you know a paddle some appendages like that yeah uh i don't see why not man they, these fish are down there hanging out under a mat a big weight comes i mean they, it, it's mostly just out of instinct they just open yeah. the mouth and grab that thing yeah. like yeah, yeah i i can see that so I don't want to go into too much detail because um, <laughs> this is part of the secret of designing baits. <laughs> um, um, but uh, yeah, so the a lot of baits seem gimmicky only because nobody fishes them that way. Um, you know, I don't have, you know, Nico, we don't make a full line of like bass baits. You know, we're a small company. You know, we, we just make, um, you know, a select variety of them. And uh so, you know, when you use these other baits and other applications, you like I said, you really do learn a lot and you'll realize what what makes a good bait. Um, yeah. So I wouldn't, you know, don't get too hung up on if it's a sh whether it's called a shrimp or an octopus or sure. something like that. Um, you know, the, the point is um, a lot of, you know, a lot of what's out there is, is paid to be out there. Um, and so you don't always do everything. You don't you should don't always do everything the way everybody else does, and you know. All right, no. Alex. Next time you're punching mats, I want you to uh, put that one on. Yeah. Let's see what kind right. of damage you could do. Right. I could see. <laughs> That's one a crazy thing. color, man. Yeah, it's um, it's not a. You know, not? I like I, it. Well, I, 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 you know, those little those little squid we had earlier. Um, the um, orange is not a color for me where I fish. Mm -hmm. you know, where I do my testing, like orange is just orange and reds just don't really work for me where I do most of my fishing. Um, but I know if you go down the river five or six miles, people swear by orange, you know. Um, but that orange squid has done really, really well. Um, and that orange shrimp should too. Those shrimp right there. Are really really nice. They were really one of my survival baits. If you need to catch a fish, put a yeah. shrimp on. Um, that looks like the larger size, but a lot of people drop shot those now in Virginia. Um, Whoa! I could see it. I um, could see it. You know, I've put some really. I've put some. Uh, well, some of for what are for me very large bass. You know, like five six pounds for me. I've done a lot of them on the shrimp. Um, you know, so those have, uh, 
you know, don't don't be afraid to try those because they they really do perform. And yeah. like I you know, said earlier, the difference between a freshwater bait and a saltwater bait is really a lot of times it's the price, you know, or the packaging. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid to try those. And um, yeah. So hmm. then we got we do have one more Ooh. maybe to discuss if you guys are okay. Yeah. The bass worms. I don't know if you yeah. ever get. Did you ever get any? Yeah. Let's see what you got. You got the club tails. Okay. And well. Did you get the little pointy tail? Dang right I do. All right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm I'm too nice to you. <laughs> um, the um the bass worms um uh again they float and for a lot of people I, I mean a lot of people probably haven't tried them. They they're very versatile. See um there's a hole in there. You see that hole? I put my finger right through the bait. So they're actually hollow from uh, the head to that hole. And so they're designed for, you can put in rattles, glow sticks, you can check scent, you can put weights, you can change the buoyancy of them. Um, you can, uh, these worms, you can sort of, I don't know what you would call it, sort of walk the dog type thing. You can, you can, you can run them. You can make these baits zigzag on, even on top water. And you can, you can actually maneuver around all the algae pads if you rig them up just right and practice a little. And uh, they're really, really versatile baits. And um, they're all scented, built-in scent. You know, some have shrimp, some have garlic, some have squid. And uh, uh -huh. I've got eight. I've got seven colors of the club tail, which is the most popular, that one there. And I've only got one color of this one. This one is a kind of a new release for us. Um, so I've just got the green pumpkin for this one. So Scott, I'm curious. You said you could stick a glow stick in there. Is that a Nico product, or is that just like a glow stick you buy five year olds and you can? Shoot no, it it's um, yeah, it would be. Well, it would, I guess it would be like the glow stick for five year olds. So Japan's where a lot of the innovation in fishing really happens. Oh yeah, and a lot of baits are um, were increasingly designed to take glow sticks, um, and they make special little glow stick little capsules. Um, for soft for for soft plastics and fishing, and it's becoming quite popular in Japan. And I don't think it's I don't think really anybody in the U.S. does it yet. But um, Nico makes plastics for some very very super famous everyday household name companies, you know, and who use who incorporate glow glow sticks into their products. Um, we don't have any that are specifically designed for that right now, but um, the, the the bass worms will work, you know. So those are really nice. They're very extreme. This is probably the most versatile bait bass worm out there. And, um, you know, I, I know a lot of people will go over 100 catches on one. It's, it's so versatile. It's amazing. We, um, I've never shared this video uh, for some reason, but we've, wrecked them on the bass worms yes well you know you've never see we know this is not rehearsed because i didn't know that. no <laughs> I, I mean you know this is the true this is a video i said eric i don't know if i want to release it and i'm gonna i'm showing you a little clips here um it works and then when you know they will wear out eventually because you're usually putting a bigger hook through them um and you can chop them off and put the uh the remainder on a ned rig and uh, you you could probably go 500 fish on a bass worm before you completely wear it out. Mm hmm There you go. Yeah. So, yeah, so the bass worms are, are quite nice. And um, I buy them in bulk because they're all special order. Um, they're so all, they're we, all, we put a rattle special. in that one. Yeah. So bass worms are not an official Nico product. We have molds, and uh, I special order them, and I'm the only person allowed to buy them. And I just I just send them orders for what colors and whatever scents I come up with. And uh, and by the I, way, uh, this was the day I had to launch my boat <laughs> with a big yacht in the way. <laughs> <laughs> But um, we flat out wrecked them on the on the on the Chesapeake on that worm, and I I, I can't believe I never shared this. Yeah, I just told Eric I'm like we need a couple seasons of this bait yet, 
Um, <laughs> but it's kind of funny. Look at that, man. We didn't even. Why was he parked there? Was it? Was uh, it dude, there? dude was there for two days. It was like that. <laughs> Anyways, we finally made it. And so that. It's a great boat name. Yes. So we also, uh, that was fishing docks, but we were also on the grass with these worms. Doing pretty well, too. I wonder if we have a fish catch on here. I don't, I don't remember. Anyways, that's enough of that. Um, yeah, so we actually have molds for five different type of worms, but... Um, I just the club tails, the, you know, that's what people like the best. And that pointy, that pintail, what we call it, is the call mm -hmm. it the second. So I think next year we'll probably come out, we'll, we'll probably have four or five different models next year, um, you know, for them. So, and, you know, if you're, if you're really into the weird things, I, I do have one more thing that's coming up in a couple yeah. of months, maybe, yeah. maybe a month, maybe two is um this this is going to kind of bizarre but um i i don't actually have a full set so i had to piece it together Ooh. was um you know like a it's just a string of balls i have it on a little jig head here right um these are massively scented these are these are like catfish baits but they're plastic and um the uh, i've fish these a lot on the we have smaller sizes um we have seven and ten millimeters um i fished them a lot um smallmouth love them um i would fish them as a strand here's a here's a strand of one of the here's the 10 millimeter size you know i would just cut a you know pop off a length of that i wanted fish it like a worm they're really heavily scented um it's just just like round balls it's like an eggs maybe and uh fish really like them so i they're fished differently around the world and uh, nico actually makes these actually some of the world's most famous companies i could name them um uh actually buy these from nico um mm -hmm. and they're, they're 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 now sold in europe all across asia all, all across the world now by um, a few people now the u.s market is really really slow to pick up on these um but these great big giant ones are coming out next month and you can actually put these on med rigs and they are so heavily scented um now it's going to be a little bit pricey because you're going to pay maybe like four dollars or something for them mm -hmm. but um i'll tell you what um they, they produce and um it's a very unusual approach and something nobody else does um but they're very effective um and like i said i use them as a, as a strand um, but they were designed and this is something that the viewers might appreciate. Travis, you might try it out. Is when you combine a single one like that. Yeah. When you put one combined with your other plastic bait, you just get better production. Um, you, you, it's um, uh, or even if you're fishing for, like, let's say you're going cat fishing, you've got your your cut herring or or whatever you're using. Put one of these on along with it and you'll get more fish um it just happens that that's why they're sold around the world for that purpose because they're heavily scented the profile the color there's just something about it that makes a difference and um i've done it for bass fishing as well there's a couple you know every now and then you get a situation where you know there's a fish there you know he should bite um and this is one of the one of the techniques that you can use is put one of these scent balls on and if for some reason it just seems to make a difference most of the time um and then you know, i was i i fished for um uh halibut catfish brook trout bass all these things i put a little scent ball on and it just uh increases production hmm. you know what, Amazing. now you've got something weird over there well yeah very weird little strips yes these are these are great for, um, well, I like them for really crappy, really. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet you you have a lot of customers for trout, panfish, <clears throat> perch, crappie yeah. as well. Yeah, so start with trout. 
the the scent balls that I hear, this this ten millimeter orange for trout for stock mm -hmm. trout, um, and little wax worms. Um, yeah, just get those and you're in business. Um, if you're fishing for creeks, native trout, put on these little caddis flies, one and a half inch. That's a true survival bait. You know, if you have to survive on fish that you had to catch, you know, had to catch yourself, that's the way to do it. You know, we have little um, little stone flies. Jeez. Um, you know, we have. And here's another nice one. Here's uh, actually uh, something people you know fish for bass might use it's a one and a half inch octopus but you can dress your troubles with it and so a lot of you know it's just it's a tiny little niche market but we have a lot of not a lot but we have people sending us pictures about dressing their troubles with so people. would you put that that the treble hook through that like the, yeah. the shank yep right through it it's hollow the head's hollow it goes right through yeah um so you know they work for um people a, will uh, pop bar What's that? Like a pop or something on a top, like a back hook on the treble hook, like yeah. where you'd put a feather. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Anywhere you'd have a feather or, you know, dress any trouble, it's fine. Um, you know, I don't think a lot of people use many, in, many inline spinners for, for bass probably, but um, I know a lot of guys uh, will, will change out their treble on an inline spinner and put these on. Somebody in the comments way earlier in the show let that slip. Something about a rooster tail. And that, oh, really? yeah. and that, and that squid, or the octopus on the back of it. Yeah, you remember? And, uh, yeah, I kind of let that slide because I I wasn't sure what how the heck he was talking about, but I get it now. Yeah, yeah. So you got to remember, um, in in the U.S., I mean, most of a lot of the development of baits is is really kind of copying what everybody else is doing, right? Just kind of you just sort of come out with your own version of it. Um, and so the fish have seen a lot and there's, you know, when you, when you provide them with something, number one, that's different. And number, number two, that, that again, it mimics nature and at a, at some sort of fundamental level. Um, it just, it just tends to increase your production. You'll get, you tend to get more fish. Um, and it's also more fun because you, you did something that nobody else did. Um, and you're getting fish on so, um, yeah, so that, I mean, that pretty much, I mean, it pretty much covers a lot of what we, what I already had here. Um, I guess well, just one more thing about the, um, the material that we didn't discuss because probably a lot of people don't know, you know, Nico's material, it floats, it's completely non-toxic. You could actually eat and smoke this plastic and it wouldn't hurt you. Um, you you know, don't, don't be eating it because you'll choke on it because it's, <laughs> it's so resilient and it does say on the package, it's not for human consumption. Um, but there's no environmental hormones. It breaks down over time. It, it's legally, it's not biodegradable because of the laws in the U S. Um, but it does break down. It, um, it swallows safe for wildlife. So if uh, you lose it, if it's floating, if a bird picks it up or a turtle eats it, um, it, it's going to stay soft. Their fish ingest it. You're not going to be pulling these, you know, hard pieces of swollen plastic out of a fish's gut. Um, they remain soft. The fish can still swim and catch prey or escape, you know, from predators. Um, completely non-toxic. It breaks down. And, you know, that's really, when we call it the next generation of soft baits, um, it really is. And, um, you know, like I said, nobody can do what Nico can do right now. I mean, one day they will. Um, but right now, Nico is the only company that can do that. And that's why we make, you know, you know, you know, we make baits for for companies that everybody knows that nobody knows that, that we're doing, <laughs> you know. So mm -hmm. um, and they do that because of we can do things that nobody else does. So, you know, a big part of the company's philosophy is to have a to have people enjoy the environment and not have polluted. Sure. Hey, that's awesome. I remember last year, Eric put one in his water glass, a Nico bait in his water glass, and he's just drinking with the oh, yeah. bait in his uh, water glass. On your yeah, you can, you know, this is a, medic, a medical food grade plastic. Even the scents, even the colors are all food grade. Um, and there's nothing in these baits that are not approved for, you know, either food or medical applications. 
You know, one one bait we haven't talked about, oh, which no. we should. Oh, yeah. Right wow. there. Well, oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And there I am on the big screen, jacking on a few with that bait. Um, absolutely. The Super Nets. So, the... Um, Nico's calling. They're all out of bed. There we go. They're sold saying, every single one stop, of them out. People are saying, stop telling all the secrets. <laughs> right. um, now, the, the Super Neds are uh, a, a 2.8 um, bait. They, If you remember the bass worms, right? So they're kind of a similar profile here. So a lot of people were actually buying our bass worms, chopping them, and using them as Ned rigs. And we had a lot of customers calling us, you've got to make that head in a net rig. So we did. Um, so it's slightly different. Um, we kind of had to re, sort of re-engineer it a little bit. But it's a two and a half inch worm or a 2.8 inch. Um, you know, it's basically a little stick bait. Um, it's got a thicker profile. So if you're fishing TRDs, TRDs are, for example, much thinner. Um, this is a thick profile. Um, and it's got... We talked about this vibration, so it's got um, it's got the thicker. Here you go. It's got the thicker, wider ribs down here. It's got very fine ribs up here. Um, it's got a you know pretty big um, what's called a clitellum, you know, little that little band on the on the worm there. So it's a little bit different design, unique profile. Um, to get a, to give you a, an idea on the thickness, it's actually at a forty-five caliber bullet. Um, so if you shoot and you know what a you know you, you get a feel for a 45 caliber, that's what this diameter is. Um, and again, super stretchy and scented, and they also have a recessed uh, butt end, the square mm -hmm. end there. Yep. You maybe maybe see it. They're recessed, um, and we do that so that they give you a little snugger. If you're using a round jig head, they're going to snug up on that jig head uh, a lot better as well, and. Uh, Especially the black one is a pretty heavy with scent, with squid smell. So, yeah, these are really, really nice. Um, I've had a lot of people um, really like these. And and believe it or not, even in today's world, we actually reduce the price on those. Hmm. Um, everything is going up in the world. And um, so we, we did, uh, we, we were able to uh, get the price uh, dropped down on those. So you get eight, eight in the, we got five colors. You get eight per pack. Um, it's quite a bargain. Yeah, and, and again, it they're extremely durable, unless you're getting snagged or caught. Um, yeah, these baits are going to last. Yeah. So the one thing, because it's a thicker profile, it's got a bigger body to it, um, and it's going to have a lot more bo more buoyancy than you're used to on uh, if you're fishing other similar Ned baits. And um, from my personal experience. Um, I get snagged less. That buoyancy seems to um, keep the hook out of harm's way a lot more than, you know, the, the baits with less buoyancy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, some of the baits are, um, I guess the really cool one here is that Lunar. That right there. Anybody see that, that core shot? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah that's, uh, that's a really nice color. Um, and you know one of the models the fusion model actually has glow flake in it um so um they're really really nice baits. i know travis you fished them a little bit haven't you oh for sure yes absolutely um yeah i guess my my favorite is the eclipse uh, yeah yep but i do like uh where's that other color it's more of that clear Probably, yep. Yeah. The fusion or the uh, uh, lunar, yep, right? Yep. There it is. So is the core of that one, Scott? Does that have the squid in it, like a lot of the other ones did? Yep. That's a that's a squid core, and uh, the clear outer layer has that small like dust that 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 flake. We call it aurora because yeah. it looks like the aurora up in the you know or far up north. Um, yeah. So that one's a. Um, a night that that's a really nice color um so <sighs> some good stuff we learned a lot 
there's a lot of great baits that you guys make. There's a couple we haven't talked about. I do want to bring one bait up in particular because I have caught some smallmouth in the past on it. Um, you don't quite make them in colors that I'm real uh, that get me too excited, okay? But I do want to talk about it. Um, the action when you really fish it, uh, I guess with a lot of movement, it, it's almost like a snake. It twists and turns on a drop shot. And we're talking about this little guy right here. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which does sandwich. have some great action. <coughs> oh, this, yeah. color, this is the color I caught him on. Yeah, the colors. Yeah, I'm not I'm not real happy with the colors either. But if you could get this in a natural, I'm all I'm all about this. In fact, I probably should throw this a little bit more because it does give off some. Can you imagine ripping that off the bottom, like with a heavy drop shot deep, and yeah. then let it dead stick? Yep. Um, wow. Yeah, that that that's really a, a drop shot bait. It, you, the body is is a uh, a little bit thin. It's you know you can put it on a collarless jig head. It, it'll work there, but um, you don't have a lot of you know extra uh, to work mm -hmm. with. Um, I I had no idea which bait you were talking about just now. right. <laughs> <laughs> so um we've got i've actually got six colors and um you've got a red we call it bloody red you know just the glow white mm -hmm. um so i fish the glow whites a lot a sure those. um orange i don't fish very much um just orange where i am i just don't like orange but this um these two here um the pinks do really well and uh, this color here, that clear with red flake. So, yep. you know, yep. I'm a big fan of clear baits, um, especially in clear water or where the fish are really shy. Um, if you need the fish to come out from under shelter, you need them to, to come to ex an exposed area to hit your bait. Um, I find clear baits seem to work pretty well in that, in that regard. And so, um, yeah, so the, the, that's, that's a nice bait. They're, they're called sandworms. They're, they're 3.3 inches long. They're, um, they're in the, you know, the, the package, it looks like this. The package is not resealable, you know? So that's kind of another problem thing you probably didn't like about them. Um, I'm not a big fan of the packaging, but, um, uh, and they're dappy. That there's that super soft material. Yeah. Listen, while we're at it, you brought it up. I'm anti uh, packaging when I can't put them back on the pig once I tear them. Come on, man. Do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So the packaging is a little. Yeah, I can provide some advice, but I get overruled on packaging uh, a lot. Um, I have those little sticky tabs. You can buy a sticky tab with a with the with the hole punched in it, and you can put those bags back on yeah. the on the paper. Part, part of the yeah. reason is uh, the Nico puts you know natural materials into the baits, natural, you know, food grade squids, shrimp, you know, other things, um, and the concept was they don't want. You know, when they're on the shelf, they don't want people opening them up all the time. And sure. um, number one, they will lose their freshness. I mean, somewhere on the pack, it says keep package closed to maintain freshness because the baits do have a freshness. The scent is built in. And, you know, every time you smell them, you're getting less scent. I mean, the scent's finite. It's going to dissipate in, at some point. Um, but like I said, you stretch them because it's built in and it recharges them. But the other thing is... Um, uh, I mentioned earlier the the baits develop memory. So if people are in the stores opening them up, moving them around, sure, um, and they're sticky, and they're difficult to reposition, and so someone in the store would have to reposition them. So those are the reasons why those packs are sealed, um, freshness, and then to keep them presentable um, to the customers, um, because people and I, it kind of drives me nuts. People at fishing shows will get my packs. <laughs> And they'll just wiggle, they'll just roll them and roll them and wiggle yeah. them. And then I end up with a pack that looks kind of weird and nobody wants to buy it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but people do that. And uh, so that, anyway, that's to maintain. That makes sense. I get know. it. Um, 
but those are really nice baits. They're uh, if you you drop shot a lot, that's something I would definitely recommend. Yeah. Um, I'm I also would love to have some fresh water colors on them, but we're not there yet. You know, we're sure. still a small company. You know. Um, I get it. Um, you know. Whew. I don't know if we got a lot of questions or not, but. Well, we had a lot of. We did. Travis Myers was in the chat. He did a great job of answering people's questions. I know he has a lot of experience with the Nico's Nico Bay twos, helping us out on that front. So, Travis, we appreciate that. And yeah, Travis is. Um, hmm, yeah, Travis has a a great mind. <laughs> um, <coughs> so. Um, good. Good stuff. Well, yeah. Right. If I, like Scott said, though, if anyone does have any last-minute questions here, get them in. We'll be sure to take care of those before we wrap up tonight. Yeah, I just want to thank everybody for hanging out tonight. Of course, uh, you can use that code SMALLMOUTHCRUSH10. And if you're watching this after the fact, I'm sure uh, we'll keep that up for a little while for you guys, too. So, Yep. Um, so, anyway... Um, Next year, we hopefully we'll have a couple of new exciting baits that we're sort of uh, on the drawing board at the moment. And is there uh, some stuff coming out? Yeah, one of them will be completely new, and uh, if if we can get it right, then I think it'll be a really, really, really awesome bait. That another bait that will really speak to what Nico can do. Um, but a lot of these are challenging, you know. They're not. <laughs> this is not. This is not as easy as some people think. That's. I think that's why everybody kind of copies everybody. Um, it, it, there's a lot. Like there's 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 a whole lot more goes into it than people realize. Yeah. And uh, so it, we've, we've, we're working on a couple things um, for next year. So hopefully we'll get it by January. Fair enough. Good stuff, Alex. Do we have a winner on the super chat for tonight? We sure do. I want to thank everyone for entering tonight. We had a lot of entrance, but the winner of our Super Chat giveaway that gets the Monster Bass bag with the Nico Bates and all sorts of extra goodies in there is none other than Larry Manzi. Larry, congratulations all on right, the win. Larry. If you would message Travis and I on any social media platform, we will be glad to get your address and get that pack shipped out to you. Congrats, congratulations to Larry. Very good. There we go. Oh, man. Good show. Good show, guys. Um, again, next week, Monday night, we're going to do the Smallmouth Crush VIP members only. I'll be taking charge and uh, dishing out all of my secrets when it comes to uh, fishing around the spawn. And I think you're going to learn something. It's going to be a real good show. I'm not going to hold anything back. I, I guarantee you're going to learn a few tricks uh, for that. So I know a lot of... A lot of guys here that are with us still to the end tonight are going to be there next week, Monday. But if you haven't signed up and you're interested to see what it's all about, you can head over to the website and sign up today. We got a few more videos coming out as well here. Uh, I, I finished up a couple of uh, videos on how I organized my tackle in the garage as well as out in the boat. And so that's a two-part series. Then, of course, we have uh, our tackle room makeover from JP. That's going to be coming out shortly. There's got to be another video. There's a video, a couple other. Uh, gosh, what the heck did I just do the other day? Uh, crankbait video. So I caught a bunch of fish square billing. Had, uh, well, Eric doesn't want me to put that video out. <laughs> but, and, and he has a good point. So we'll see. I did put a lot of time in to make that video. Um, but we, I ended up having a pretty heavy bag on the Chesapeake square billing. So, um, yeah. I go, Eric, I'm out of here. I ain't coming back to this Chesapeake after, you know, I got another year and a half and I'm out of this, this place. We'll be up where the big smallmouth live, but um, we'll see. We might be able to put that. We might be able to share that video. So a lot of good things coming down the works. I guess that's all I got. No show on Eric. He texts. He's like, we're still running behind. So that's what <laughs> happens when you travel around. Yeah. He's going to be fishing uh, down in Alabama for the next couple uh, couple days, so we'll get a full report. I think they went on Gunnersville this afternoon, so very cool. Scott, thanks for joining us. Oh, thank you. 
And uh, time, Scott. no, you guys, uh, if anybody has any questions afterwards, you know, you, you can, you can, I think there's a place on the website. You can you know, like contact us and just send a question. And uh, those are all answered by me personally. Um, so do you need to reach me personally? Just go through the website. Love it. And the, net, the, the website is nico-fishing.com. Um, if you click on the online store, it takes you to the, a different uh, URL, but you know, that's, that's where you can go. Perfect. Awesome. Awesome. And as always guys, uh oh, where's my ending? Well, <laughs> screw it. As always, guys, until next time, we'll see you on the water. Have a good right. night, guys. Thank you.